Okay, we are live. I'm here with Brandon Lechtenberg. Who, Brandon? Introduce yourself real quick, and then we'll 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 tell our we'll tell the roles where you were at when this game was actually going on. Yep. So, uh, Brandon Lechtenberg, I'm the defensive coordinator at Central Oklahoma Division II school, kind of in the Oklahoma City area in the MIAA. So that's me. <laughs> Nate, tell 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 the people who you are. Uh, Nate Tice, you'll you'll see me in this game on the sidelines signaling some sweet plays in. Uh, but other than that, I, I bounced around. I was a scout and coach in the NFL for a little bit. And now I work on the athletic football show mainly, uh, podcast there, and then tweet some wrestling clips and occasional X's no stuff on Twitter and uh, on Twitch streams as well, Nate underscore ties. How close are you to getting that affiliate thing? Oh, man. I uh, – I got the whatever the first one is I got. And then the second one is more I have to be more consistent, which I so you might see a bunch of prospect Twitch streams coming up where random one hour little streams of some random middle middle round quarterbacks and receivers coming up for the draft. <laughs> well, shit, there was a USFL draft today. How, how oh, deep man. are we going in this draft thing? Uh, we, we'll get to the top. I, it has to have a draftable grade. So there's not going to be a the number one pick was from like was it Occidental? Occidental? What, how do you say that school? My, that's an Oklahoma school. Is that Oklahoma school? Or is that Southern Texas California, school? home of Barack that's Obama. That's Southern California? Barack Obama uh, went there. Oh, man. Yep, but he's the number one pick, apparently. I am not going that deep. Although there is a quarterback from Brown I did like, uh, but that's more like a sixth or seventh rounder. There will not be a Twitch stream on EJ Perry from Brown, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> that's bullshit. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm not a fan of this. So at the time... Brandon was a – you were a graduate assistant for this season, right? Yep. I was a graduate assistant down on the sideline uh, carrying blitz cards around and following Coach Patterson around the sideline. So funny story, AFCA that year was in Dallas. Was it Dallas? Yes. And we met up. We had met up the year before, and we went out. Mm -hmm. So we're out at uh, Hooters – fine American yep. establishment uh, <laughs> and um, they're all in their TCU gear I'm in my crumb grabber gear wherever the hell I was at the time and they were showing because it was literally a, a, only a few days removed from the game and they were showing clips of the game on ESPN while we're sitting in Hooters and I'm like these guys coached in that game these guys coached in that game and they're all like shut the fuck up um because I, I I thought it was cool, but uh, <laughs> but uh, and so Nate, you were a quarterback on this team, you, as you mentioned. Yep. You were uh, we're going to see if we can spot you on the sideline. So you both are actually on the sideline during this game. Yes, yep. uh, you'll see me a couple times. There's there's a couple run plays that came where you I, I had some good Jason Garrett clapping going on. Uh, so yeah, you I got some strong clapping from me from young twenty one year old Nate uh, on the sideline there. Wrist flexion. Um, <laughs> So we have, we do not have the Wisconsin tags. We're, I think it's pretty much zone encounter. It's, uh, it's a lot of zone encounter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a couple uh, steps yep. of power in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, have the, the stuff I pieced together from uh, Chad Glasgow did a Tony Franklin again, like even like a week after this game, he showed a bunch of the film. So we have the TCU tag. So um, as this thing is educational, we will stop most plays and kind of talk through some of the concepts. There's some of my favorite concepts in this game. So we'll get to that. So um, before we get into the weeds, I want to kind of talk through the game plan. Now, a couple things, caveat. I slept two hours today. And when I mean I slept two hours, I slept two hours last night. So I'm not an exaggeration. So if I like blankly staring in the camera and, uh, or drift off, I apologize in advance. We're also asking guys that have been life lifers in football to recall something from 11 years ago. So we're going to do our best to try to remember some of this stuff. But Nate, going into the game, what do you remember about the game plan? What you guys were trying to accomplish there? I know passing game wise, and you'll see it a couple times. We we knew we were going to get a decent chunk of too high a version of that. So you'll see us trying to attack it with some backside digs. Um, you'll see some switch concepts that we ran out of trips. 
Um, we're also, we lined up some guys in the number three spot and we're trying to run a lot of outbreakers. We had uh, a receiver in there and then we said, screw that. We just started using Lance Kendricks in that role. Um, really a lot of Lance Kendricks in this game, good and bad. Cause he is, our, he was our Swiss army knife that year. And then run game wise, like you kind of hinted to a lot of zone. We were trying to get guys flown and hit the backside of it. Uh, but really rewatching it, very frustrated rewatching this game because there was a lot of guys just missing one block off or someone not climbing or a TCU linebacker shooting real fast and the running back tripping up over themselves. Uh, so we're getting to that. But really what was nice about Wisconsin is that we didn't really change much in our run game, depending on who we played against. We had some formation stuff, but you kind of knew what we were going to run. Like you said, counter power, a little bit of zone. We ran a lot of zone in this game, though, which I, I'm trying to recall the reason why. But how the game kind of went along, I could kind of see what we were trying to do. It's a lot of stuff trying to get the hit, stretch it and slip it, I would say is the best way to put it with that zone game. Like, what do you remember leading up to the game and, and kind of the game plan and what you guys were trying to accomplish there? So, first of all, this was probably the most elite running attack that I can remember ever personally coaching against or seeing. And I think one of the all-time great running attacks we were defending. I, I don't know how many NFL offensive linemen you had on that team. But <laughs> there was there was more than a couple. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, so it was. We, uh, I, I was going through it today, and I was like, "Yep, he went the league. He went the league. He went the league." And then all the backups were league guys. Too. Was, no, I, I thought that was normal. Had, I thought that was normal. I was thinking you had <laughs> like several backups that went to the NFL that yeah. year, and that was the year where you guys were putting up fifty points a game, running zone and power. Like that was the, yeah. and obviously you had a passing attack too, but you were running the ball for three hundred yards a game. Um, so it was, and. and Part of the reason I'd say you were probably running zone is you were so much bigger and stronger than us up front. Like we had a, and we always had a TCU during that time, undersized defensive lineman that had to slant and move to try to give us an advantage. Yeah. Speed and athleticism was a strength of ours, but just having those 280, 300 pound inside guys that a lot of teams had, Big Ten teams had, and SEC teams had, we didn't have. So, uh, and, and you see that in this film at times where you guys move us up front. Uh, and part of our, overall philosophy didn't change so i mean it adapted to to this game but it wasn't different than what it was week in week out and that's going to be we're going to slant and move our defensive front to try to give them uh some advantages by by using athleticism over just root yeah. strength uh, we are going to be in a bunch of too high we based out of cover four match quarters and then several different variations of cover two we ran very little to no true cover three. If we went single eye, it was going to be some form of man free. And we were about as likely to go just straight zero as we were man free. So that adapted. Now this was, we didn't see a lot of 12 personnel in the mountain West. So, so it was going to be, and I think I still to this day think it's maybe the hardest personnel group to defend. Uh, and where you guys had a lot of success was going ace true double tight stuff, which not a lot of teams do. But I think that's very challenging, regardless of what defense you run when you balance up and can and can move the defensive line. I mean, you, you can gain some leverage advantages there. Um, but it was taking our our adjustments and we, we kind of adjust our five jam, our base blitz to make it a little to fit bigger personnel groupings, which we had done that previously against Stanford and some other teams that had gotten big with some success. So we took a lot of our regular concepts and modified them to play big personnel, a lot of blue pitch. And, you know, I know you've talked a lot about that in the past, Vassar. So a lot of trying to spill the ball to try to make the ball bounce to a certain extent. I think what, what I saw when I rewatched the film and I had forgotten about this is we were overplaying tight end run game. And you guys really in the first two drives of this game exploited us by running split inside run game. Yeah. And then once we made that adjustment to quit moving the defensive front so much, we actually had a much more – success when we stayed home on the backside a little bit more but i that's, agree with you on uh, the way the game went and, and this is this is coaching because uh, you're frustrated about how many times you miss some guys i think that i could say the same thing on defense there's times where we just play with bad technique and we're in the right spots and don't make the play and but that's how football goes it's players yeah. players being able to go execute when it matters and this was from a, a personal plug for the these two football teams I had to break down Oregon, Wisconsin, and um, Auburn that weekend leading up to the bowl selection show because we didn't know who we were going to play. And I honestly believe the best two teams in the country were playing in that Rose Bowl that night. It was 
And that's, I've said to you guys before the show is that talking to coach Chris after this game, he was so frustrated about it. And he said, you know, someone said to me, it was such a good football game. And, and I'm repeating the story for you guys, but it's, and kind of like looking at it, like, yeah, when you look at it from an outsider's perspective, it was a hell of a football game. There's no turnovers. There's a bunch of good players. There's a bunch of good scheme stuff, just sound football going back and forth. And I, I believe it too, especially our defense. The next year, our offense was a tad better, but because of Russell, you know, Russell Wilson will do that. <laughs> we'll do that for your offense. But our defense this year, this is when J.J. Watt came along. This is when yeah. we had some legit dudes on the defensive side that we didn't have the next year. And so mm -hmm. that's what we were a much more complete team this year. So I to totally agree. I remember we were not happy about playing TCU because we were just like, oh, damn it. They're good. Like they're not like they're not just about that bunch of at we played Miami the year before. I'm gonna get on get on Vass a little bit here. Play no, Miami a little bit about that shit. I'm gonna do your it ass. was a champ sports bowl and it was all about I was speed there, versus power. I was interrogating. I don't I remember. Okay. I oh, remember. the opening kick. Oh, I'm telling you what, when they had that opening kick and they did the reverse, I remember I was like, we're gonna get blown the F out. Like that was, I saw a gust of wind just went by me on the kickoff return. And I was like, that's that's legit Miami speed. That's not the speed we have at Wisconsin. After that, it was great though. That was great. But I agree with you. I agree with you, coach, is that that playing against you guys, that was just, a, it was a battle and it was like a fun battle, especially rewatching it. It was just a lot of sound ball being played, which, so two good teams. Well, it's interesting to see, you know, TCU is, has got to be the number one team over the years, slanting out of an even front. This is something you don't necessarily see a lot. And you see it pay off. And then you see there was some direction stuff, which we'll get into what some of that stuff means, um, where they would slide the second tight end over and half the defense got the call, half the defense didn't. And you see it literally the Red Sea parts and mm. then and then the blocking takes over. And it's just like, I mean, you guys are just so physical. Even your receivers, the first snap and we'll yeah. get into it right now. We'll just we'll just go right into it. So, yeah, yeah Isaac was blocking what his the ass hell off. Is that? That's not what I want. We got a problem. <laughs> Are we already having, are we really seriously already having technical difficulties? Really? You got to get your rest now. That's what happens on two hours of sleep. There we are. This isn't what I wanted, but we'll, we'll have to take it. But uh, you'll see on the first play. So the first play is going to be tight G. So tight G means the front is set to the tight end playing role, which is TCU's at that time was their bunch adjustment. Um, which is basically just a version of cover three. You can see the strong safety is outside of it here. But you watch the X receiver, the playing cloud on the backside, which is a, vorm, a form of cover two, but it, it inserts the safety a little bit more aggressively than you're used to seeing where guys are bailing out of there. And you just watch the X receiver dig this guy out, and the first play goes for 40 yards. And this is what you were talking about with the split inside run game. Everybody clears. They get a hat on the backer. The the X receiver gets two for one, and it's out the gate, 40 yards, first play. Yeah, and that we were able to get to so much weak side zone because of that too high defense. Like, even in the NFL right now, and, and you know, that's going to be more my specialty or what I kind of see the most week in, week out, is you see weak side zone and power cropping back up because too high safeties. And it's just the math works out. So that's why you'll see so much of it in this game, this variation, what we call Zulu um being a zone word but that's just weak side zone for us like so honestly this was just tribe left fire zulu that's as easy as it gets for me <laughs> uh call wise but yeah that's that's why you'll see a lot of weak side zone this game well and, and yeah. this this surface right here kind of screwed them up too because they were loosening the end up and they were yeah. sliding the backers yep and i remember when we we brandon and i worked together at Millsaps college uh the year after this game and you know, we would see teams that would run zone lead, and that was always the question going into the meeting room is can we slide or not? And you can yeah. see here what happens. And, and this is an example of maybe some bad technique on our part uh, and good players on their part because, you I mean, the, the big issue here is when the nose goes – I mean, he gets yeah buried on this play. <laughs> now, we still should be – like, we, we get outplayed on this, not necessarily out-schemed. Um, and we're going to get hit on a couple of scheme things, but right now 35 doesn't use his hands. And then if you watch that backside linebacker uh, tank uh, number 43, we'll just refer to him as tank. I mean, he's taking bad footwork, bad angle, a little bit. Oh, like he 
himself out of the play. Like he should be yeah. scraping over top of that to minimal make this a four or five yard gain if he just kind of does what he's supposed to do on that play. Yeah, I know that that's when you you were talking about that offensive line. You have a the center was a second round pick, and I think the right guard is Zeitler there, who was a late mm-hmm. first round pick for the Bengals. And Zeitler actually had a decent game this game. Talk about disappointing performances from some other guys that we'll look at too. But yeah, that was, that's exactly it. That's a huge, huge double team right there. Huge climb. It's like it's exactly what you want on the first play of the game. Second play, there's a penalty, I believe. Oh, the on, receiver, right? It was Toon. Yeah, I believe so. So now you've got first and fifteen after the big run, and yeah. get another slide of zone week. So this is the call is tight G tank. So what Luck mentioned earlier was overplaying the tight end side run so tank needs the line these three guys right here are going to slot a slant to the tight end Mm -hmm. flip means the receiver's going to go over now i don't yeah it is flip they'll they'll flip so what flip flip is yep go ahead and explain flip like so if we tagged flip that meant we would go corners over to two speed formations Mm -hmm. Uh, it also meant that we would travel. Our base rule was we didn't travel with motion. If they motioned to a nub side tight end, our corner would stay and we'd cloud it. Okay. Um, flip got us into a situation where now if it was – so if they lined up in this formation, our corners would have been over out the jump. Um, but because they motioned to it, we end up going with the motion to gain a guy. It kind of plays – it's a man's own concept. Yeah, and I actually this play was interesting for me because I was trying to remember what the receiver thing here is because this didn't make sense to me as far as bringing the receiver over to run weak side zone, and I think is we weren't expecting how you guys played here. <laughs> I honestly mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember exact because we run this play again, we being the 2010 Wisconsin Badgers, uh, we run this play again later in the game that looked a little cleaner as far as what the receiver's assignment was because a lot of times when you bring that receiver down to that position you're trying to you know, just get presence on an end or, mm-hmm. or insert if he's towards the tight end side, insert on a duo run. But here it's kind of like he's just hanging out. So I've, I've been curious about this one. Or a first drive of the Rose Bowl might have some guys amped up, you know. So this one I this one I was trying to remember exactly what happened here. But you can oh, see yeah. the same thing. We're trying to go to weak side zone again. Um, this one, too, formation-wise or personnel-wise, we if you notice that we will rotate three tight ends throughout this game. So here we have Lance Kendricks, 84 in, and he'll be the Swiss Army knife for us. But then we have Jacob Pedersen, 48, um, coming throughout the game. And we also have 82, Jake Byrne. And 82 is our true wide tight end. So I think we are really trying to make this look like a pass. 11 personnel, 84 is in it. Hey, let's get him into a passing call. I think that's really what we were trying to do here. So here's in this, this play, Chris, is what I talked about at the beginning, where they kind of had a schemed early on, uh, just from a standpoint of – we're getting to a nine technique and a nine technique to weak yeah. side zone. You're losing that. We still have a guy responsible for that gap, but he's not going to show up nearly as quickly. And you'll see an adjustment. Yeah. Once we stop tanking quite so much, this play, we start handling this play a whole lot better than we do early in the football game by playing him in a six technique rather than a nine. Now mm-hmm. playing off of that too, this comes back to one of the age old questions that you and I have always talked about with key and a tackle versus a tight end these are probably the best tight ends we ever played. And there's times when we beat them and times when we don't. Yeah. Well, and the bait and what coach is alluding to is the base technique here is a six technique. If he wasn't stepping out, Mm -hmm. uh, would key the hip of the tackle and hopefully beat this cutoff and come down the line and make this thing go all the way out and make the tackle at the line. And you can see um, the redirect here. The nose doesn't do it as well. He's stepping at the center, but watch 94. He's going to step and then redirect back into the zone 94 season on the first step bam bam and then what coach bumpus taught which i loved and we we took this to high school was if you got scoop because i noticed on zone as they were scooping up because the backers were playing so tight that they had to go and try to turn these into singles these guys actually turn their back to the ball and let the tackle push them down the line to keep their gap and so it just keeps making the ball go all the way out and mm-hmm. this guy actually will fold in and make the play i believe or no he well and that's one of the that's sorry. the old hawk alignment too chris that you see a bunch yeah. of in this game that i probably failed to mention that we know we're playing zone so it forces those double t- it limits your ability to double team when they got to climb to a back who's at the heel line 
Yep. I know. See, yeah, you, you have some head up guys throughout the game too. That that that'll really mess up the double teams as well. I think I think mm-hmm. I saw a couple of those. I might be misremembering off the top of my head, but what's, my first glance through this morning. <laughs> what's funny is watching these backers play. Not so much when they're in the gun, but when they're under center. Now with all the tight fronts and the nesting and the, fitting the ball and all that shit. It's fun to watch these guys hawk it, hawk it at two yards and just say "fuck it" and just go. <laughs> uh, and and it, and again, it pays off sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't. I mean, that's the that's what happens with this stuff. But yeah, uh, this is just yeah. zone cut off backside yeah. again. Another weak side zone for nine yards. Playing tight G or playing uh, again roll here and it, again. You this get a was three a for heavy, one on the crack. heavy. Pass, this was a heavy pass formation for us too. Um, going bunch with the running back strong, mm-hmm. and 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 we run it later in the game. I think we run a drive concept out of it. But yeah, this was a heavy, heavy pass formation for us. If I remember correctly, see what they're signaling. Are they signaling slide? So the tags don't have it. But again, the rule was for slide was normally. Yeah, we're we're in a slide concept here. I can. Yep. This would be the Mike and the Sam. They will okay. slide over into an versus to an overshifted. Four three sets. So this is the Mike. This is the Sam. Now, typically yeah. the Sam is gap free, but it looks like what you guys did was you you played a de facto blast versus the bunch, yep. and then had the Sam play the C gap. Yep. And then that number one, the safety walking down, ends up should be your B gap defender to the mm-hmm. weak side. And this is where the crack comes in because again, let's go back mm-hmm. to the wide copy. You you get two for one. Yep. And that's why oh, yeah. you guys... our receivers were getting fired out of a cannon in this game. Yeah. They, is that is that Tune Altoon son? That's yep, that's Altoon son. That's Nick Tune. He, he got drafted. He by was the a Saints. really good player. I remember that yeah. was one of the big things. Uh, like our concerns, he, where he was really the one concern we had in the passing game that we had to try yep. to limit. And then we had the other guy, Isaac uh, Isaac Anderson, number six, and he you know he's limited, he's shorter, but he battled his ass off blocking as well. Um, Tune has a drop on this drive, spoilers, but then, mm-hmm. but then he, you could tell he kind of gets geeked up after that, like kind of, he really gets mad at himself about that. So it was actually cool to watch him block this game. Oh, he was a monster in the first drive, especially. He's all of 6'2", 210, 215. Like he's a true X build. He's a Wisconsin X. <laughs> yeah. I remember I, I talked to Narduzzi around this time at a Glacier clinic. And uh, I said to him, we, the back shoulder fade was starting to get in vogue. And I asked him, and I said, what do you do versus that? And he's like, he looks at me and goes, I don't fucking know. We don't see that. It's <laughs> just dying that, like, nobody in the Big Ten would run a back shoulder nope. fade. Oh, we threw Russ. We would, uh, we would, when Russ came in the next year, that's what was so fun. I backed up Tolzien and then backed up Russ, and you couldn't get two more different styles of quarterbacks. And we would have, if you had press and the trips formation in the red zone, you could fist the X, and that means just run a fade. Yeah. And we used, we would do it. You know, Tolzien would do it in practice sometimes. I think he once did it in the game. And also, when Russ got into town, there was a whole lot of fists. Every time we were in the red zone, he was throwing fades to Nick too. And it, it, like, it, it was better than a 50, 50 ball, but I, I, it was like a whole new world. I was like, I didn't know we could do that. Yeah. I didn't know like quarterbacks actually, that was like an advantage for us. Like that we could actually do that every week. So, uh, so you got third and two here. So you, you could tell after getting worn down a little bit, um, sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting coffee brought to me cause I am hurting. Um, Patterson goes for, Dogs one, baby. Field Jeremy, why dogs B. So yep. this we're getting in the weeds here, Nate, but do you remember why you guys pulled the tight was it just the angles on the three and the six? Why you yep. were pulling the guard and the tight end as opposed yep. to the tackle? It's it's the same pin pole call, but then it's just adjusted based on the front. So it's just on the angles created, and then there's me you calls between tackle guards and center. So yeah, that's really just what it was, just based on the front played. Yeah, because so, we called we called this one variation. We called, we called it rig, and that's where you see the tackle pull. And that was you can tell it was a very uh, game planny call, which makes sense given what the what, what what you prep for for bowl games. You have four weeks to prep for it, so it mm-hmm. makes a lot more sense. So this call right here is field G. We're setting the front to the field. We're slanting to the boundary. The Did strong safety is coming off the edge. The inside yeah. backer, well. 
he's supposed to hit the B gap, but he ends up almost always hitting the C, which I found when I ran it. Like, you can talk to me about this, but with him coming down, if they get this down block here, if this tight end goes down, this guy ends up fitting off his ass. So as he's going to hit the B, he ends up hitting the next window only unless he has uh, to read out. So, yeah, so if, if you were to, like, base everything out, like run a base protection and that tackle were block the slanting defensive end, the defensive end would stay in the C gap and tank would hit the B gap. Exactly what you said. Now, once you get down, down, it ends up skipping a gap. So, I mean, I, I think at one point he called it BC because you'd hit the B or the C gap. Here's the way, just to, how, the way I teach this now and started teaching it a couple of years ago at UIW, coaching linebackers on any, I mean, NCAA two off a side is a very common blitz. As I started communicating to 43, like he's a read blitzer and he's going to read the tackle, but he's reading run pass. So on a run play, he'll read out of the actual blitz path and, and play ball, mm-hmm. fast flow, things like that. If you get speed option weak here, it doesn't make any sense for him to blitz the strong side B gap. Right. Uh, once it becomes pass, you're reading the tackle. He's out, I'm in. He's in, I'm out. So that's not necessarily what we were teaching him then. I'm just giving you a little tidbit on what we're doing now with that same concept where, where I just – anytime we're bringing two off of a side, I said that linebacker's a read blitzer. And first you're reading run pass. On run, play ball. Uh, on pass, read the tackle. He's in, I'm out. He's out, I'm in. But that's what I'd say he's doing here is he's supposed to be coming off the edge. He sees a guard pull. He reads out of the blitz and plays ball. Now, it, the call was why dogs be a parentheses A. Was the A an alert or was the A to tell him? Because he would never hit the A gap. Cause it's gonna... No, I, yeah, the the A was probably an alert. I don't know for sure. He would not. There's nothing that would have him in the A gap ever. So I, don't, that, I honestly don't have an answer to that. So that's the path coverage. Safety has the tight end. Yeah. Backer has the, the, the back. Now, the problem with this play, and you don't usually get this out of formation, is this backer has this running back now if he yep. peels the blitzer has him from this side and then tcu's running a silver call which is again a little tougher with the tight end because you got person yep. there the back flares this way the end takes him but if the back comes up anywhere in here 35 has him and then the safety who you can't really see out of the picture has this tight end and the corners are mm-hmm. locked on you could see tank read out he sees the guard pull and spoiler alert, see? this will be the same play we run on the last play of the game. Yep. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> and actually, you, it will look a little bit different, but it will be the exact same call. So this is that same counter play, whatever you want to call it. We, it's 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 bastardized how we call it. We called it the same term as our power, but it actually how it plays out as counter. Um, if you watch 84, Kendrick's on the back side. That's an adjustment by him. He's pulling. But if you bring one anyone off the edge, he stops his pull and picks him up. So he is that why? Happen. Sorry to interrupt, but I was gonna jump in when you were talking about number six motioning across in the one play where he added, because TCU is the king of edge rushers. Do you think that's yeah. why he was there? Was to pick that shit up off the edge? I I think so. I think it's a seal. I think is what the term we called. You right? talking about on the first play of the game, Vass? Yeah. Was it the first play? or or, or the second? It was or the third. second yeah, or third play when they motioned the, the receiver yeah. over. Yeah, very easily yeah. could be because we certainly yep. were a very very heavy edge pressure football team. That was going to be and my it, question, but it's, and, and I or I was going to ask, and then we got onto something else. And as soon as Nate said it, I was like, okay, maybe that's maybe that's the case. And you'll see eighty four throughout this whole game. Also peeking backside before he pulls like that. Cause that's an adjustment we've had. And probably, and this is what we prepped for the entire time was like, Hey, you know, be aware of that, be cognizant of that. And I was curious too, on this one too, is I think we should, we, you'll see a shift a lot with our tight ends in this game. And we were trying to get, cause we're trying to 82 is our bottom, like 82 is a tackle. Like he essentially is a tackle. Um, the, yeah. Who's the front side tight end here, burn. Mm-hmm. And we are trying a lot of times to get the TC to, to set, their front and then shift 82 to the weak side basically it'd be an h but really he's a y and so that's why you'll see a lot of our tight end shifting is because we're hiding we're trying to hide that we're going to run behind 82 and not 84. right well what's yeah. interesting here is counter you know it's it you know pull kick you know trap the first yep. man but with this optional pull it almost looks like one back power like you're saying because yep. the tight end starts the down block he see is this Jer- jerry hughes was 98 or 90 no yeah, so ninety, I believe, is, is Maponga. Yeah, that's Maponga. So, oh yeah, 
he the starts to step down. He tank because it's a it's an army, so they're slanting outside. Yeah, and it looks like he just kind of takes them out. And then because you don't have the second puller, so you don't have a, 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 a trapper and a rapper, is it just turn into one back power out of counter, like counter footwork? Yep. That's basically what it turns into. Because he's uh, yeah, trying to pull up gap, and isolate the linebacker. Scheme. Yep, it's gap scheme. And yeah, and it just gets muddled up. Uh, and, you know, they're just trying to get the two yards, wherever it was on there. But yeah, it gets kind of muddled up on it. Um, kind of one of those where you're trying to make the best of not a clean look, I guess. But really, it all comes down to the tight ends block to set the edge. <laughs> I mean, that's the if, game. If he's game within the up. game, so this is bulldog personnel. This is a twenty TCU's twenty two personnel package with an extra safety here. Um, now this call is interesting. So TCU is one of the only other teams I know that runs a shitload of double G's. Double double. It's really I would say double shades. It's double G's. Yeah. This call twos. was Indian fullback, which meant. From what I can tell, and like, let me know if this jogs your memory. It's going to be Indian front, but if they slid the fullback offset, it would become over or tight G to that side. Right, we would move the three technique to him. Okay. So right now, it should stay in a double G front. If that fullback were strong or weak, we should have a three mm -hmm. technique to him wherever he went to. Okay. This is a great job here. Sorry, Nate. Uh, I'm, you, you know uh, what side I'm rooting for. This one hurt. <laughs> I feel bad if There's two of these numbers. that was like, oh, my God. Yeah, this one hurt. And Lance is so, such a good good puller, too. That's what makes it even more frustrating. <laughs> so, whoever, real quick note for you guys that follow me. So, when we talk about blue pitch all the time, all blue pitch is, is it's quarters, but it tells the strong safety here. Instead of having the pitch on option, he would have the quarterback, the free safety here would have the pitch and so i actually stumbled upon this i asked leck in blue pitch do you guys box or spill now leck said spill but this is where miscommunication can somehow like lead to creativity <laughs> he meant with the linebackers because by rule tc boxed their linebackers unless they got a call from the safety a bonus call to tell them you can spill so lex thinking i'm ta asking about this guy but I was actually asking about this guy. So we put in, quote unquote, blue pitch and taught this guy to calm down the line and kill everything out here. And then this guy widened out and he would just track it down outside in. And it became like the best two back defense we had. And it was all because I didn't clarify to Leck who I was asking about when we did this. But <laughs> well, this is great to your fit. point on that. So this, this is a great clip of because they get that backside linebacker block so we're balanced up right now uh mm -hmm. and they they've got us outnumbered right now from uh mm -hmm. if if everybody stays on their block really our safety makes a play is what happens right now mm -hmm. so if you if you pause it right there so this and now to your point if we end up if 28 off the edge here is that colin i think yeah Colin off John. the edge uh, if he spills that guy we're going to be fine because he's going to take two blockers by spilling that one mm -hmm when he boxes it like he does you can see they've got a guy for the safety that makes the sack for tj there that comes up and actually makes the tackle like that's that's us making a play i mean that's a we don't technically have them outnumbered right now tj yeah. johnson play right now i love this block he's like is he going inside okay no i'm gonna go <laughs> yep you see the whole game <laughs> i've never seen that before what uh, yeah watch his eyes he's like okay okay uh Check you're not going all right God, i'm going and he That's still gets is. there. Almost, he almost makes the block. From on the line of scrimmage, too. Because I, I do remember that we were trying to hide that. Because our usual, this run play, this double pull and counter, whatever you want to call it, with a lead counter, pull, counter extra, I, I think as some people call it, Yeah, is, is we were trying to hide. We would usually have the receiver towards 84 side, and then he would motion across and be off ball, almost yeah. like in a wing position with like a, behind a ghost tight end. And I think this we were we knew TCU was very, you know, very heavy with tendency stuff, and like you know we're trying to like just hide anything we could. So yeah. having a guy that could run, oh, a guy like Lance, be able to do this from on the ball is pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty special actually. Pretty crazy, <laughs> even if he does. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna throw a counterpoint out there, uh, and it's a really good scheme against us. Absolutely agree. And I just now noticed this. And clearly, you guys are heavy check and edge pressure. Like, your guys on the edge, whether they're down as tight ends or they're off, they're checking to see if somebody's coming off the edge first. Now, you watch your pulling tight end here. 
that half a second that he slows down, if you're yeah. telling him just to go, he probably makes that block like that. Yep. That. So to a certain extent, and then we do that as coaches all the time, like are we over coaching something versus just letting the kid play fast? That's as I watch that play, I see if that kid isn't worried about the edge pressure, then he probably makes the block because that half a second he gets slowed down. That's the difference on that play right there. And then right. your guys are doing it play in, play out, and it's working sometimes. That's probably an example where it, where it doesn't work quite we're so doing well. too much yeah no to great great point if you guys have ever heard me talk about defending the fly sweep i've talked about a concept called white stinger five jam cheat which was talked to me by brandon which is where the difference when tcu brought edge pressure is this guy would spill and the backer would overlap outside and you'd play too deep but the cheat call meant with jet motion the corner would come inside to trap and the safety would play over the top. Now, with it being unbalanced, so the X is off, the Z is on, or it's flipped. I, I don't know. I, it looks like it's X over. And the Z's off. They're going to run the fly. Now that the tight end is ineligible, or he should be, that backer doesn't have to worry about carrying two if it's a play-action pass. And he can just overplay the run. But watch what happens on fly sweeps. Nobody can get this corner. And I've talked about this so many times. If you're looking to defend fly sweep plays, because what has to happen is, especially if let's say there's a slot here, he goes. So this guy goes, oh shit, and has to go block him. No. Now the corner triggers now, which means he has to go, oh shit, and block him, which means you have a half safety with reading two guys that are blocking damn near perpendicular line of scrimmage. And he can replace outside. And I've we've called this where this half safety, the freaking half safety is made a play two yards from the line of scrimmage because it's all about fast reactions. God. And if you bypass it, then he's going to make the play. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, they're running zone lead weak against this. It's window dressing, but you can see the front here. Yeah. We're just There's to where the movement helps. Linebackers, the bump over just a little bit please <laughs> now you can see where now with this guy not stepping out he's reading the no. tackle well actually he's not reading the tackle he's planning he's on this one it's a it's a blitz so he's blitzing into that c gap but it, it would play the same if he was reading the tackle when you see those head up head up linemen you can see the pain in the ass that they create so like center the center's not able to get cloth so yes we have more powerful guys but still and create edginess and then the right guard you know he has a single block i mean 94 gets across but anyways but uh you can really see where especially if you're playing the zone teams or duo heavy teams it's just like if you take away those that cloth that those double teams can create it's just it makes it just a little bit harder it just makes it turns into one-on-one -on -one blocks like throughout the board which you yeah you want that for wisconsin but like in this game not always well and what i love about this is and i come from this school of thought is I love what 90 does here. Like with this stinger coming off the edge, coming flat, it, there's no, you cut it back, but because he's coming flat, this guy actually should bounce out a little bit and play really behind everything. Yeah. I, I would tell you that like he's wrong on this play. Cause and, and this is where to your point, that tight end can't run vertical. So he doesn't necessarily have to worry about that VH, but they're getting two vertical threats over there. 43 should be widening a little bit. And then that ball, he should be in position to play this ball damn near at the line of scrimmage right now. Because really his VH with this motion is that fly guy. Like that's who he's responsible mm -hmm. for now. So the backers should be adjusting a little bit with that motion. Because it's a three-back three picture now. <laughs> that's the one thing yeah. about motion. People get so freaked out by it. And Leck, you taught me this. I'd yep. be like, well, what, what do you do this? Well, yeah, how are you going to defend this? And, and you're like, well, where? what would you do if he just lined up there? What would you do if this guy just lined up here? Now, yes, I know he's going to be able to go faster, but still, it's a three-back. Right now, three it's a three-back offense. Mm -hmm. But what my point was is so many guys want to stay square to line of scrimmage, and I get that. You can you can make plays. You There are pros and cons to everything, but if 90 tries to stay square here, he's not making this thing. That thing gets inside him. But because he turns and, he, you know, mm -hmm. get in your gap, get in your gap, fight to get in your gap, it makes the thing go outside of him, and that's where he can come mm -hmm. and clean this up and make the tackle for a short game. I mean, this is what happened in the the, the Super Bowl, just uh, how the Bengals were playing against the Rams' run game. 
is their guys were just knifing inside one after another. They're taking turns on it, and mm-hmm. no, the running backs couldn't cut, get up field. They so they're trying to bounce it, then they they can't bounce. Okay, what do we do on zone if we can't bounce? All right, let's get north, and then they're just getting whacked from the backside because those guys were just knifing inside one after another. All right, All right so this. So- this is third oh, yeah. and eight. Talk to me about this pass. One of our concept. 12 pass plays that we have. Okay, Let's so. Go. We, There's this not is, two tight ends in the game. I don't even recognize it. I know. This is uh, Coach Chris's, uh, I'm giving it away, but his favorite pass play. And this is called Sword. And so. It's called what? what? Is, I'm sorry, Sword or uh, Sword? Sword, like a sword. Sword. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we, we have word. the sharp, sharp object family. For 200, and, please. <laughs> And what we're with sword, and really this is the perfect look for it, is we have that backside dig to take advantage of quarters defenses where that backside free safety is pushing to number three vertical. So that's what that's taking advantage of. We'll have number three on the vertical. We'll have number number two should be going on a seam or he reads it and can run a corner if he wants to. Um, so it's like a dot, dot, dot to the corner. And then the number uh, on the outside, wow. number one, yeah, that, that's fine. <laughs> uh, number one is an under route. So he he's, he runs basically a hitch. And then if it's if the guy's off of him, he can come inside. So it's like an optional inside route. So you're creating the high low over there. With <gasps> sword, we face so much quarters in the Big Ten. Then this was this would just destroy. It. This is how we got our X going. And we so you'd see a lot of backside digs in this game because we knew the safety would be pushing so hard to number three vertical. And yeah, it actually, the ball goes where it should. Um, and we, they just missed it. I think it was kind of a drop, kind of a weird pass and a kind of a good play by the corner as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is sword. And the coverage is just straight quarters, uh, yeah, strong safety playing hang technique corners. Yeah, poaching got, number three on the backside. Yeah. Poaching yep. three at one-on-one back over here. So you're five over three, one, uh, sorry. He's up in the line. One, two, let's see. One two three four five over three yep Man and then on the you've got side. one on or two on two on the back side the mic actually should not get this much depth but it was their big their their big play guy or one of their best guys mm-hmm. so probably in this game it was like hey man you, you understand carry his ass longer <laughs> it, it's also yep. third and eight yep. so i, I get it yep. And then the stunt, I want to show you the yeah, stunt. Yeah, he ought to zone up there at about 8 to 10 yards and then push back. To, he won't show up on the dig. That route still, we got to win the one-on-one out there, which to yeah. me is always one of the big questions in football. Who can win that one-on-one? Yep, as a good that's why X receivers, that's why, that's why you yep. want them. Yep. This is uh, what I, I called inverted pirate. The uh, TCU calls this eat. End around two. So this the D end over so here is going to read the slide. If the center goes this way, he'll end, he'll stay on this side. If the center goes back okay. this way, he'll come back all the way around. The old dick bump is special, and I know the backer's trying to walk up here to try to get this guard so he can't help. Yeah. But sorry, I actually thought our our center did a good job here getting back in it, but you can see some oh. limitations crop up there when he uh, he he's trying to reset or readjust for the the game. But like I actually thought he did a really nice job because better D lines and better defensive schemes would really take advantage of the shoulder turn. If mm-hmm. if oh, the center truly wants to turn his shoulders, like the Rams might do that a lot, um, and they pick them. And better defenses will just pick those guys, and it just creates a guy right down the shoot running run right at the quarterback. So I think a lot centers are getting top more and more just set vertically as opposed to truly turning to his side. So that was a good instance of that right there. So question in the chat, would you say the D tackle goes too fast instead of getting vertical? That's not how they did it. They went right now. That was yep. very much a that was very much a coach Bumpus thing, who was the D line coach there with the best mustache in the history of college football. So here is this is a sign of the times right here. Tight G Hawk to Bronco. This used to be a day one fucking call. The backers are at the heat well, they say heels the line, but really two and a half yards to try to take off the one on ones. We got cover two surrounding the run game, which what they call two, which is robber coverage. Strong safety is going to play the flats. Free safety is robbing oh. number two. Backside Bronco. This safety here has the vertical and out of the tight end. This backer right here is going to undercut any outs, and then you're basically man on the backside unless he goes underneath. And this you're going to see that hawk alignment by the linebackers when the quarterback's under center. Like that was a base. Because yes. now – 
you're defending zone football, like you're it, downhill. Like that's the that's an adjustment. And again, the reason for that is to keep you from double teaming the inside guys as much as possible. Make it to where those guys can hit a run through. Uh, it's almost like we're in a six down front right now. Mm -hmm. where those guys are hitting the gaps. It should become one-on-ones. The ball should cut back, and T.J. Johnson and uh, and Colin Jones should be making a two-man vice tackle. Three and then 27 from that comes from outside the screen. Like this is this whole – this is exactly what we want this football to do on mm -hmm. zone. We want it to cut, wind all the way back, and we should have two unblocked players waiting on it. I'm actually surprised in this game, Leck. You weren't checking loose. You were playing always six techniques, even even in yeah. Indian. There was that one snap in Indian where it was G's and sixes, which scares the – as a high school coach, first and foremost, scares the ever-living shit out of me. But uh, such good it's player. Also, it's also very possible that we see so little double tight end, like A sets, that they maybe <laughs> just lined up wrong because they're used to always being a six technique, not realizing that they might be away from the call on against these guys. And we shifted on this one again. Yeah. Uh, we started in the wing and shifted to the yeah, to what we call dot the or hits. It. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so we're in hip. Actually, if you would have left the tight end there, you would have been a lot better. <laughs> I know. I was looking at that. That was but a that's, juicy look. That's the world I grew up in. So when the whole tight front thing happened and everybody's like, no, you got to keep the backers back. You got to keep them back. I'm like, what? What do you mean you got to keep them? No, bullshit. We're keeping them back. <laughs> All right, so here's Cobra Ooh, Gate. So this three. is a stunt we talk about a lot. Adam Gaylor talks about it. Torch stunt that has a million names. These two D tackles are going to read the center. If the center comes to me, I'm going to be the penetrator. I'm sorry, I'm going to be the looper. So let's watch. Let's just go to the end zone real quick. You're reading the center. We're going to step at the center. Center's to me. I'm going to pick here. Center's away. I'm going to go inside and hit his ass. Get vertical. Mm -hmm. That was a coaching point that I didn't know at first. And so we would have problems where these guys would just get down and we couldn't get guys around. And it was a pain in the ass. Good job of picking that up. That's because they have the NFL Pro Bowl up, up front. Now let's go to the coverage. <laughs> we got flip solo here. So now we're playing corners over palms, basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so one and two. So wrong. corner, corner. And then the free safety here is playing robber or quarters on three backside weak safety has the tight end man to man with this would this be gun scoot it doesn't matter it probably it could this is a pass call right now and i don't know that mm -hmm. there is so concerned about the run gaps right now gate was not something and we've actually at previous since i've left there at uiw we had a lot of success running gate in the run game like yeah said. versus pulling teams yeah, yeah, it became a pretty good run. Really, it's pretty good against pole. It's good against inside zone. The play that it's really hard on outside zone is a play that that it's tough on. But inside zone, Cheeto, the power read stuff, it's, it's actually really good against that too because you'll gain that extra guy on the quarterback a lot. Mm -hmm. Good versus the pistol. If you, if they don't have tendencies where, where you know they're going to go, where the puller's going to go, it, it makes you right. I was shitty at coaching it. I will be the first to tell you. I was never had any success doing it, but I know a lot it's of funny here. It's sorry. It's funny hearing you guys call it. And then how, cause the quarterback lines, you have to bucket everything. It's yeah. like, yes, you know, there's nuances and everything, but you go, okay, it's too high. I'm looking at it this way. It's blitz. I'm looking at it this way. Right. And it's funny. Cause Scotty reads this as quarters. So that's why he's hitting the backside safety. Cause he, he's reading this exactly like that red zone play. This is what we call hunt. Um, but this we have the, the play backside. you're talking about with three on the out. Yep, and we we get to it a couple different ways, but I remember we wanted to do the one by three version with you know trips receivers and a tight end as a lone guy, is because we wanted you know speed at three and and get that going, but also having Lance eighty four on these backside digs, um, so it's and kind of trying to get the best. best you've of got a leverage here. advantage on us right there too, which helps yep. in running that. It's when you have a tight end that can run these, and I'm I'm shocked NFL doesn't get to it more, especially in the red zone. Uh, for whatever reason, you run that same concept that we saw the the drop in the red zone, that play on this last play, running out of those dot formations, or really think of twelve personnel, but slot kind of like so like a a slot, like that backside dig by the tight end can get such juicy leverage. 
like just having him on in breakers from there, but people just don't run it. And I'm trying to figure out why <laughs> it's one of, I'm not, I've never been a play caller in the NFL. I just have been on the staffs. So I've been very curious why that hasn't proliferated. I guess, you know, tight, having a tight end will help. Like Lance Kendricks was an advantage every week. So yeah. that, that's why you're able to do those receiver well, things with him. I'm going to totally steal that and start talking about juicy leverage with my defense too. It's all about gaining <laughs> juicy leverage. I like it. Juicy leverage. I steal it from my dad because he would always say juicy run look. And then I, and then as a pass call, pass, passing guy, I'm like, oh, it's juicy leverage. <laughs> this is so this is actually so this is 12 personnel. Uh, so one of these cats is a tight end. Is this the guy in motion? No, this is a receiver. Or maybe I miss, maybe it's mistagged. Maybe 11. So yeah, the call is tight G tank flip solo. So you'll see they're lined up in two. And you can see coach signaling here. Flip, 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 flip. They're going to spin down. The corner's going to come over to play over here. Yeah, so that kind play. Of, that's actually kind that of a bust. You got two on one and one on none. So that play that we saw earlier, it was a bust. I think actually we called it the wrong way. Um, that one where we had the receiver sealing the edge, and I was wondering why we ran at it. This is what it should have looked like. like this. Yeah, I actually think, yeah, I think that was a busted call. And actually I'm having a memory come back to me, and I remember they asked me what I signaled. Because <laughs> they're like, well, did you signal the wrong play? And actually, now that I remember on that first drive, it was it just got called wrong. He just called it in the wrong direction. So it's which, it's yeah. for the record, it's Paul Chris's fault. It's not your fault. It's not Paul Chris's fault. I'm blaming it on Scott Tolzien, Johnny Unitas winner, <laughs> who I backed up. By the way, I think Wisconsin, besides Russ, had had Scott Tolzien every year for like ten years. It's, Me and my buddy Lowe would be like, who's the Wisconsin quarterback this year? It's like it's Scott Tolzien. He's going to wear number 16, yeah. some basic number, you know. It's He's going to be from a, a, some sort of farm. This is actually interesting. So the, the line is tanking here to defeat the stretch. This just showed that that's not how it's supposed to look. Uh, I told you I'm tired. Watch this, right? This is how good Wisconsin's line is. Or maybe he just trips. He's got the movement on him, but well, he still gets him down. <laughs> Any mean any means necessary. Look at the center pulling. You got CT so stretch CT. Yeah, get still gets them on the ground. A hop, skip, and a jump. What what? Uh, I remember watching there this earlier and being like, "Oh shit, this is going to be a TFL." And then yeah. six yards later, coach, how about these He's, socks right here? By the way, let's get a look at that. Do we see plug. a Nate Tice sighting right here? Yeah. Is this you right here? There he is. There's is the clapping. You? Oh yeah, got some prime clapping here. Look at that handsome I, son of a bitch. Just like you guys, I thought that was going to be a TFL, and I think it turned into a nice game. Uh, so, yeah, that's Mo- Moffitt's the left guard, John Moffitt. He was he got drafted by the Seahawks, uh, third round, I think. So He's here up. we got Indian fullback again. This is zero pitch press. So now, kind of the same thing as blue pitch, except it's zero. So they're going to choke down a little bit, play press coverage here on the corner, play action we're pass trying to make out of twenty two personnel or on second and yeah. four. Yep. This is real football now. <laughs> We're trying to make this look like that that same thing where I was saying that we would have the tight end where you've seen 84 pull from on the line of scrimmage. We were trying to make this look like our, our basic 22 personnel formation, which is start starts in a wing, then he motions just outside the tackle, but then he just mm-hmm. keeps motioning out. We turn it into, you know, basically in a pass formation, a slot formation out of 22. So this is one of the things in modern football, all the, the air raid guys and the spread it out guys, they failed under, like they're all talking about trying to get a one-on-one. If you put two tight ends in the game or three tight ends in the game, you got a one-on-one all day long. Yeah. Because yep. we have it no other choice. Yeah, I, I mean, know. our only other option is to play a man short in the run game, and then we're really in trouble. Yep. I, mean, I know. These that's... formations from a defensive standpoint, to me, I don't care what scheme I'm running – those things are always some of the most stressful ones because ultimately you got to decide, are you going to play short in the run game or are you going to and take care of that number one receiver or are you going to live in a one-on-one out there on him? Okay, yeah, so it. I was wrong early. I said that they were going to play tight G or Indian. It's actually a slant, and you could see it here. They're going to line up in double Gs, and they're going to slant to an indicator. So watch. These guys are going to – he's going to slant. He's going to take one step and slant it. I should have known because it's in it's probably, the yeah, stunt probably category. It's a talk type. It's a talk yep. concept where they're going to communicate that to the 
fullback when he's offset. And there's Jared nice hustle by 28. Yeah. yeah, 28 was also an NFL guy. Colin Jones was, I think, drafted by the Jets. Okay, like I labeled this play robber beater. I know you love how I name shit. I got the Millsaps, and they ran post. Uh, it was like, it wasn't even a post. It was like an option route, a post behind it. And he was like, what do you call that? And I call it quarter beater. And he's like, faster. You got to come. Thing. I'm terrible at naming. So that's why I always ask. Coaches think I'm always trying to get like inside info or trying to be cool. No, I'm just dog shit at naming things. <laughs> Terrible. But this is the play. We used to have this code tape that my mentor came up with. And how to beat robber coverage. You send the fullback down the middle of the field. In down this the coverage, these backers have it. I'm surprised you actually busted this out so early. Uh, I think he was antsy. I, I think Coach Chris didn't get the touchdown on the first drive. So, <laughs> Oh, the misery. Yeah. Oh, and this falls is a- down. Gave me flashbacks to my junior year of high school when I was responsible for defending that route at inside linebacker, and I missed it. Uh, th- uh, this play is an apps. I mean, this is a really difficult play to defend. Out it's of a very, I mean, yeah. no matter what formation you, unless you're in single high defense, this play yeah. is a bitch to try and stop. The only There's- way you can defend that out of robber is if the team tries to. So Alabama did this versus my mentor, and they snuck in their backup tailback as the fullback and like tried to hide him. So everybody was jumping up and down. You could yeah. see it. It was it actually so co- like you ran the code. Yeah. The code was be prepared, play hard, maximum speed, and finish. It was a thing that John Robinson came up with. He had his top three assistants, and he came up with one tier. And it was like, how do we, how do we enca- encapsulate USC football? And it was uh, Robinson, Ed Ogeron, Rod Marinelli. No, it was. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was Ed o- Ed Ogeron. No, Marinelli. Mike Riley, Keith Burns, and John Robertson, they each had to come up with their own pillar. And Keith's video, if, if I don't know if anybody here is watching, played for me. I know some of my old high school players come on here. We always showed that tape, and the, the first one is be prepared. And they played Alabama when they had Sean Alexander. And they brought in, because everybody was so keyed up to stop Alexander, they put his, the, his backup in at full, at, he was the fullback, and he was like trying to hide. I know you can't see me right now, but he was like trying to hide back there and they're like jumping up and down. He still almost gets past them, but I don't know. Well, people don't run this sort of coverage in the NFL. I was going to say, could you imagine uh Shanahan? Well, you're, this? you're, it, it goes back to, I mean, you're, you're sound on the board to defend that play linebackers, vertical and number three, three went vertical yeah. linebackers got to yeah. go with him. Yeah. But the, the, the play, practice play of that is off. a whole lot difficult. The fog of war makes that really, really hard on the backer to yeah. play run on run and then catch that thing slipping down the pipe. All right, Lek, be honest. How excited are you as a, as a as a former Cornhusker fan? Did you go did you go to Nebraska? Did you do your undergrad in Nebraska, Lincoln? Yep. Yep, I did. Did this did this just give you Actually, just... the second time I was at the Rose Bowl, the first time I was a fan there. What Watched game was the, that, Lek? Nebraska <laughs> Miami. Let's talk about that Miami game. <laughs> yeah. Belly a little belly G lead. Yep. Oh. Lead. There's John Clay. Okay, so. I think he's bigger than all the D tackles. He's he is. He, he was two. He was two eighty. He was over two eighty here. He uh, he he was a huge recruit. Really good player. He had some foot stuff um, that he battled throughout this year. He still ran for a thousand yards, I think. Oh, but he, no uh, big deal. So he, yeah, no big deal. He, but he put on the weight pretty pretty quick. We we had one snap early in the season. We had a, a offense alignment at fullback. J.J. Watt is our third tight end, and John Clay at running back at 270-something pounds. It was like J.J. Biggest... Watt was your third tight end? In the school line set we had early in the oh, season. Oh, and then... I thought you meant just like like regular. You know, he started as a tight end at Central Michigan, and then they moved him uh, You know, to... I'm just so juiced to see Baylor use their linebacker as a running back. Like, I love I, – I'll always be a I high school that. guy at heart, even though I'm see, doing Vita my fancy. fullback now? What's that? Vita Vea. They have Vita Vea playing fullback with the Bucks right now. It's hilarious. Just no, no, it's not. Pounds. So Vita, so let me tell you about Vita Vea. So I had to coach against Vita Vea when he was a freshman. He had to sign a waiver to play varsity football as a 14-year-old when we should have been the ones signing the fucking waivers. He, <laughs> he took, as a freshman, took our left tackle. And, and Northern California football is pretty good. Yeah. He took our left tackle and turned him into a turnstile. And then 
when he was a senior, they got in the bone or power eye, and they gave him the ball. All those clips. Are yeah, all he was over a YouTube. back, right? It's amazing. But I was coaching in the area, and I was I I remember uh, I was watching another team that was playing Milpitas, and I was like, holy shit, that's unfair. All right, so we get the same thing. You go from wing, yeah, wing motioning to balance Back up. To You're gonna get real quick. What's that? Back to that scoreboard real quick. This was something that <laughs> that uh, kind of hit me. So tw- most of the points in this game came in the first quarter. So you yep. can see that in some adjustments got made, some teams kind of settled in. Like it was – like both offenses went down and scored points on mm-hmm. both of their first two drives. This is drive three right now, and the scoring really slows down here for the rest of the football game. Oh, man. If I have to see an Andy Dalton zone read – getting like somehow third and one getting like four yards. It's like, Oh no, someone please tackle him. <laughs> Andy so, Dalton was the king of that. Oh, so my Nate, God. you want to hear a crazy story? Allegedly rumor has it. Brandon's brother. I tell this to all my, this is my claim to fame. Brandon's brother was an offensive GA at TCU and may or may not have invented power read. Oh, seriously. Oh, the inverted he, he invented it at it's... TCU. I do not know if TCU was the first team to ever run it, but he I'm was pretty the one sure they were. You first, I remember. I know that we scored a touchdown against JJ Watt on that play. Like, we can't. Yes. You guys, you guys, the, yes. fall, the previous year when you played Clemson, busted it out. Yeah, I remember watching that game, going, "What the hell are they doing?" And Andy Dahl just running Q power, just like down the field. Q power. Yeah, you would think he ran like a four four like four four five, and then he goes to the combine. He runs like a four eight eight. <laughs> that play had Leck so spooked. We come in on so again. I worked with Leck like six months after this game. I was his corners coach, and I did all the advanced breakdowns. And we'd come in on Sundays, and he'd be like, "Vasser, do we got?" They called it cheat. So cheat was the inverted veer play, and then they called cheat O was the power read version. He'd be like. Faster, do we got to see Cheeto this week? I'm like, and I'd have to deliver the news. It was, it was like, it was like when your friend, your friend thinks he sees his uh, friend, uh, you know, cheating on his wife, or and he asks you, "Did you see my wife with another man?" And you're like, "Ah, I don't know." Uh, that was what it felt like. <laughs> here we go. We just got a little pin pull stretch to the G six side. Nice, nice block here. But you, look how hard TC is playing. Like watch 35 here. He gets his ass cut down, pops back up, and gets back in the tackle. And that's what yeah. saved them in a lot of these plays. You're just watching effort. There was well, a play by Colin Jones earlier in zero pitch. He is off the hip of the tight end. And on that comeback to tune when he breaks that first tackle, mm-hmm. you have a guy lined up here turning and sprinting and making a tackle on a comeback out past the numbers. I mean, that's what was so impressive to me. Just look how fast they're playing. No, that's that stood out to me, and it reminded yeah. me of one of the staples of this defense. It was it wasn't necessarily what we did; it was how we did it. Yeah, like they, just they such a good tackling hard. game. I remember that tackle legs. Take your best shot, baby. Right leg. I just remember that yeah. there was such a good tackling team. I remember I got to Sarah, and they're like, "So how do you teach tackling with the DBs?" I was like, "Take your best shot." They're like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> that's your tackling cue?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's our tackling cue," and I thought I was gonna get fired. All right, so <laughs> scheme nerds, we got field G army wide smoke zero. So we're setting the front to the field, slanting to the boundary, bringing a safety off the edge. I don't think I think the backers fit this wrong, and the zone goes for 18 yards. So we'll just watch it from the end zone. Look, t- Tank's bringing the noise. He's like, "Come on, baby." Oh, he was amped up. He actually. What did you say the call was on this thing? It's field G army wide smoke zero bail. Any idea what the coverage is? Zero bail. Zero bail. So, yeah, I think with this, it's where that motion, we've got to bump a backer with that thing uh-huh. to get in the A gap. It's really got to be 35 has got to be in that A. Yeah, so it should fit. Yeah. You're the ref right is basically, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. It's fun hearing, like, you guys post-mortem on this because I – I, I have my educated guesses. <laughs> well, and, and really, the well, guy who screws this is the nose. If you draw this thing in, what should happen, and, and here's where the motion, yep. yeah, there you go. That defensive end should take the B gap. So, originally, Tank is thinking he's the extra. Really, they're yep. li- right now, Tank's kind of fitting the A gap. With the motion, they're creating an extra gap to that side of the formation. The backer's got yep. to adjust with that. And well, the nose gets shoved out to the C gap, though. Watch this. 
That's that's also yeah, that, what that matters too. Yes, yes. So go back here. That's right. So I noticed this from watching it too. Uh, the three technique or the nose there, he gets gapped. If he stays in his mm -hmm. gap, we're fine too. Okay. Like, so not only we got a back sense. kind of in the wrong gap, that's a technique thing where that defensive tackle has got to stay in that gap. Yeah, he's to got to redirect. You're right yeah, there. He's yeah. got – what's 35? Is that Johnson? What was his last name? Can that's you uh, Brock um, – Tanner Brock. And I tell you, he was a – he was an NFL talent at linebacker. He eventually had some other off the field stuff that kind of slowed him down later on in his career, but he was a true freshman in this game. Is this Karimi right here? Yep, yeah, that's Gabe Karimi. Uh, he played right tackle in the league? Yes. He My started NFL left tackle. Knowledge in the like end. 2012 was impeccable, but after that, when I started coaching in Catholic schools that played on Saturdays and our big yeah. Sundays were a big work day, it was all downhill from there. Yeah, he much better in the run game than the pass game, which is typical of a lot of Wisconsin Tight guys. Scoot, we get a scoot call. We get a little FIB action. So scoot is the equivalent of slide, but the other way. So the strong safety is going to be a part of it instead of the weak safety. We got Robert to the front side, Sky to the back side. They're going to trade, get the YY wing, and then motion the Kendricks back weak and then go back strong. Mm -hmm. And it's just power. Look at this block by holy shit. To Isaac, yeah. Yeah. He gets in there. That's when you this 28 gets up and punches this guy in the nuts for not giving him a crack call. <laughs> you, this is country right ass football right here. <laughs> so we got Scoot. Wyatt Scoot is again the the strong safety is in the slide. The backers are slid over. So we have an A gap backer and a gap free linebacker. The strong safety is the D gap player. So it's just crazy how many bodies are in this, and they still get four mm -hmm. yards. Well, it's the cutback here, and so this would come down to probably somebody who doesn't do this a lot. And then you and I, Vassar, I can't remember if it was a year you were with me. We eliminated Scoot because, and we just thought this is slide, like the strong yep. safety can slide it and the free safety can slide it. We felt like that word was not. But this is an example of twenty-eight is very rarely doing this job. Like it's. On mm -hmm. the board, we should be fine here. Like, this should be a no gain. Like, he, he should be that – he should play that backside cut back and it should be a dead play. But he's doing something he doesn't see very often or have to do very often right mm -hmm. now. He's normally out in space over top of a number two receiver. Now he's responsible for a B gap. So, that's those are just little things that, that come down to – on the board, something may be really good, but can the players go play it fast right yeah. now? What's so funny is power for the backs. It, it, you, there's two lines of thinking of it, and that's staying front side a gap out and never cutting it back. But then I get around like a guy like my dad. He teaches, hey, power can hit anywhere. It's a gap to a gap, and you can see here why. And it's just mm -hmm. you're reading linebacker. It's like it's like predetermined linebacker flow. He's already well, reading. Like and, <laughs> usually, well, not, it's, I know. not only not only that, but anybody that's followed me and has heard me talk about this nine thousand times on the defensive yeah. side, we we of course our D line play came from TCU is especially against a guy like this when they get back and pull these guys are crossing face day one, day yeah. one install back and pull especially in two backs when you get this guy now one back it gets a little hairy especially if you get some read game to it but versus this. Hell yeah, that guy's got front side. Just, yeah, just go well, straight. And, shoot. And Chris, the the people that did, and I was thinking that same thing. The people that disagree with that line of thinking would use that play to say, "Hey, that's why you can't cross face." But the reality is, if twenty eight does his job, then the ball's got nowhere to go. Absolutely, twenty eight yeah. doesn't trigger and is playing slow on that thing. Uh, that's what gives them that play on that. It's it, like we're, we've got them outnumbered across the board. Just one guy doesn't do his job here is field g army wide dogs b again so we've gotten three technique to the field you see a lot of this in 22 personnel where it's going to be balanced you get here i was just thinking too is that you can see the last play why 12 personnel is such a pain in the ass is we created a two back power look out of the mm -hmm. same look we're going ace out of same look we're going spread out of like that's a bunch out oh, of it's that's cool. It's a pain in the ass. Yeah, it is the hardest personnel grouping to defend in football, and I know that mm -hmm. it's not sexy in modern football, but it's still it's, very. It's effective. coming back, baby. It's coming back. <laughs> All right, who's wrong here, Lex? He should be spilling this block. You're trying to push yeah. it to this guy, right? Yep. He He's getting too him. wide. 
he's just getting too like you can see his path on that thing is too wide him too mm-hmm yeah this is just our counter extra play again yeah. we're trying to hide the tight end keep him on the ball okay i want to talk about my one of my favorite calls in the whole defense beast all right i'm about we're about to blow your mind Nate. i thought i, I thought i'd saw one of these oh there's three in a row there. at one point patterson just yeah. loses his fucking mind it just goes like ah i don't know how you would know it was three in a row because it could look entirely different depending on the formation that well you're I, I have i have the tags um <laughs> so beastland is this it is a let's let's go in the end zone i ho hopefully we got a pre change of strength it's motion pretty much strictly a 12 personnel call is what it's supposed to. it's uh, kind of designed for it well, you guys ran at a shitload of 22 as well with the wing, right? 12, 20, yeah, yes. Yeah, big, okay. bigger stuff. So Don't you how love we treat 33 like Troy Hardage? <laughs> the, the problem love here it. is love it. The, the end zone shot, it's already after they've motioned. So yeah. let's go to the Y copy. So the call is tight. So for you TCU aficionados that are in here, it is tight, tank, take, bog. I don't want to get into that. B slant. S dogs BC zero is the, is the back end call. So what they're down is they're going to slant. So actually let's go to the end zone. Pretend this guy has not motioned yet. So he's not there. He's here. So it's going to be a shade, a five, a three, a six, and it's going to be a split inside rusher and a backer blitzing on the split inside. So it should be take, 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 yeah, it comes oh, NCAA shit. too off an edge from the split mm -hmm. inside. Right. And then this guy's going to hit it, and then it, hopefully it cuts back in the blitzers. The B slant call means if it is balanced and it looks like this, it will come from the wide side of the field. So if you're basically, if you're getting I wing and this guy doesn't mm -hmm. exist, you are overplaying the wing. You're getting this guy across face. God, and we use this call so much my last year at Clovis because we would see 11. We would actually do it versus 11. Um, we would do it with the backers where if we would get like tight back wing on like Y off and back on the same side, we knew we were going to get power. We would get everybody and their brother. Um, but if they were split, then we would come back because we thought it was going to be split zone. So we wouldn't want to get three linemen to the party. Now you can already see, and I think in the wide copy, you can see them over shifted and then they bounce back. You see them slightly moving back because now it's just going to turn into a field G army Y dogs B. So you're sliding back. You're still going to slant here. You're still bringing two off the edge, but you're thicker you're thicker here no. so you're not just getting all those guys washed you don't got to get into great detail with this chris because it may be a little bit much but this actually plays out the easiest way a shift or a motion could because it doesn't change the blitz mm -hmm. there's yes. potential that we'd go from blitzing from the boundary to the field yeah. or yeah. from the field to the boundary like the blitz could literally come from the other side uh, yes. With a different shift or a different motion out of yeah. this. Thing. Yeah. When you said it was balanced, and it, if it by if it's balanced, it goes from the field. I was like, well, we didn't do shit to it. <laughs> that's that's no, my. No, 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 it's a tight end. Let's say the X is over here and he's out of yeah. the frame. It would look like this. Yeah. And it would be coming from here and from here. Yeah. And then this guy motions back across. It has yeah. to slide, and then the blitz changes. What Leck is saying. Then the blitzers come from this side. But yep. it gets you right. It you, It's all about overplaying tendencies, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Same play. Same you defense. Want, uh, you and wanna... here, here's where you're going to see it, Lek. Although it's in the middle of the field, so I don't know if it really changes or not. There's one where yes, it screws up. Inside. They never get to. I think there had to be two down tight ends for us to come to get checked out of it. Like when when that guy's off the ball like that, it's still mm -hmm. we'd still count that as a split inside. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay, but see, but see now with I wing, you see how this guy's a, a shade and he's a tight, he's a four, because they're ready to come back over here. Yeah, they're just adjusting their alignment to aligning for success. They're getting now. He should get all the way down to the A gap there, like, and really that's where the ball ends up hitting. That defensive end should get down to the A. I think Tank screws us up. I think he's he goes, or I don't know what yeah. he's doing. 
Yeah, we, that looks like me good. trying to jump. I know, I'm trying to. <laughs> Big John. First down. All right, here we go. So like, you love, Vanna... I know you love history, Vassar. Um, yeah, give it to and, me. And where the term B slant comes from, you probably know this already from I previous do. conversations, but it's not some, some uh, long overthought out explanation we the first time we used that blitz and that that slant and that concept was against the oregon state beavers because you had beaver like slant first game of the year that season uh <laughs> the call, some of the stuff they did so it, it started as beaver slant and then became b slant i have a couple of those for the, during this game uh if we get to them i have a couple names same exact thing we have a play called b and same thing, but it's after Coach Bielema because he had an <laughs> idea for he had an idea for a play, and it became B. So that's so. Oh, we'll so get here it. it is. It's a, it's a running back throwback. Here it is, uh, Leck. This is the play. So it's B. It's B, third play in a row. B uh, S dogs B C B slant. So now it's coming from the split end side. This is Vanna White, baby. Yep. Wheel of Fortune. It was, I was going to say, oh, here it is right here. Yeah. This is, oh, this the play, misery. This is actually the play called B. Yeah. That's funny. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, it's, we had, we have such personnel tells and formation tells just because we're at it. As soon as you we think got that to guy heavy set, that <laughs> yeah. As soon as we get into the offset back out of heavy, it's like other teams' alarm bells should have been going off. No shifting emotion either. Like, yeah. So this play was called, uh, I think our nakeds to the left were called Chili. And so right there called Bernie or Burn. And uh I think we we just called this play B. Like so this was like chili back B, back being the fullback going back across. And then would B this, was just the concept. Would this be considered Vanna White uh Leck? Oh yeah. Vanna White was any wheel, wheel of fortune, baby. Any they have some of the greatest <laughs> names of all time. White. The Tolzine special. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh come on. A misery. That's James. That running back's James White. By okay, the way. so here's something that's interesting. So now you get twenty. Uh, you get twelve personnel. They don't get the change of strength call. So this call is Field G Army Directions, five wall lock. What does that mean? It means we're gonna go Field G Army. So we're gonna set the fronts of the field. We're gonna slant to the boundary, unless. An indicator comes back or something tells us, hey, the ball's going to come over here. Then they'll work back the other way. But you'll see it in the end zone. It opens up a little bit because I don't think they get the call. If you watch the two interior guys, they both slant out. One of them, I think, I remember that. I think one of them got it and one of them didn't. So right now, right now, as this is set, it should be Army, Field G. I mean, set in the front to the offensive left, defensive right. Yeah. Or slanting right here, stepping out. Okay, he's going to come back across. It'll be a Ringo call. Ringo, Ringo, Ringo. Now it'll just be that tank where they're going to slant to it. But watch this tackle right here steps out. This tackle steps out. Yeah. And there it is. And I believe on this That's one, it's it. actually number 57 there. The right is, yeah, that one I think is wrong on this thing. Like yes, he it should, should be. be, I think. Yep. I can't. I'm not 100 percent on that, but I believe that's he's the guy that's wrong. I think that. Coach Patterson got a little excited on this one, thinking it's going to be pass because he called five wall on second and ten against 12 personnel. Yeah, he probably got. It's, I mean, when he plays five like wall, this, Nate is basically like Buster Bama's coverage and... Buster coverage. It's like it's man match two. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, especially on second and long, right? Yeah, second. And Third one, we get set G blue pitch, which is interesting because it's 13 personnel and there's no offset back. But a little zone weak action, and it's just yeah. an F U play. Third one, yeah. two yards. Yeah. I'm gonna go through fast some of these some of these calls. No, that's just... fine. I know there's not much for me to say other than zone. Yeah. Zone. <laughs> Double team climb. <laughs> All right, talking about this play, Lex. This is outlaw bullets a bullets directions. Zero. Let me see this thing play out here. We'll all go to we the what's wide and in end zone. No. Oh, oh come on, Scotty. No. Come on, Nate Tice would have caught that. I know. Get your come life on. together, Tolzine. I'm trying to remember why we had the tight ends like this, though. That's. I tell you what, though. All I can think of is we were directing to a tight end, so we, it turns into 
tight G tank bullets. You is that what, what it is? So it starts out I'm as not, outlaw. I'm not sure, like I don't remember. Double uh, threes, but, double A's, but then with this yeah, guy coming back across. Threes. Well, you don't even worry about the guy coming across. You'd go to the down tight end, so you'd be slanting to 84. So you'd end up making sure you were right. You get tight G tank bullets regardless of what they do. Mm. I'll tell you what, wow. he's almost lucky he fumbled this because this might have been a, 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 a fumble on the running back. He may have intercepted this handoff. Watch. Right. I just love how fast they play, pointing on this. Bam, get off the block. I mean, he's in there. Mm -hmm. That's because the center, center knew he had a tough block, so he was that snap probably didn't even get to the quarterback's hand. <laughs> he All was right, like, I got to reach this tank, guy. So, so it's second and 10. We got 11 personnel. We got six motioning across to create a slot. They're slanting to the down tight end. We're playing roll. It's going to be roll, which is cover three over here. Cloud, so the corner. Again, cloud is not what you're thinking in most defenses. Cloud with a nub tight end. TCU is going to play this low. I mean, one thing about Coach Patterson you're not going to see is you're not going to see a half safety just run into nothing. If you start Don't seeing guys grass. disappear, it turns into quarters almost. Yep. Like yep. that's supposed to be cloud. They're just – it's banjo. It, they're – it's it says it's cloud, but it's freaking banjo here, right? Like, I mean, am I am I yeah, talking yeah. out of turn that's, here? Yes, no, that's you're absolutely right. Here, here's here's good tank. So you got you're slanting to the tight end, full line slant. You get the run through with the backer. All oh, this makes me happy. Sorry, well, man. I feel so bad because I'm like, here. hey, man, want to come on? And then I feel like I'm ganging up on you. It's okay. You're, it's okay. You're seeing another adjustment that we got hit on in the first quarter of this game. Really, on both of the first two drives. And then we, we, they hit us on flip because they were getting us, they're getting that corner to run with that wide receiver. Ah. And they were, we were, and we weren't getting the extra guy down there by clouding this thing. We end up really with two guys staying on the back side. Mm -hmm. So there's a numbers thing that, a real subtle thing that shows up here in the yep. second quarter of this football game and for most of the rest of the game that in the first quarter, and that's, you know, your, our game plan was to flip with this. Uh, this motion was really giving us problems. And you say you hit us a couple times. So by taking us out of the flip call, that was the original up, flip call. Yeah, that's yeah, a great, we that's a great call. Like all this happened two or three times early in the game where we ran with that same motion in base defense. And now we're clouding the backside to gain the extra guy. Because being the TCU historian that I am brushing my shoulders off because that's because that's cool. <laughs> cloud nub tight ends and cloud was not your plan of attack normally. No. So now, this, we did a bunch of that at Millsaps. I actually really liked it. So, mm -hmm. when you were with me there, we, we did a bunch more of that. But at TCU, we very rarely did. Very, And you could tell. And now that you say that, it's like, yes, that's – now you get the extra hat. Now you get this guy because he's not man on the tight end like he was before. He's mm -hmm. protected. He can get his ass down there because this guy ain't going vertical. Mm -hmm. It's interesting what one guy can do. All right. Okay, five Tampa sticks. In my five years at Sarah, our, my boss, Patrick Walsh, the great Patrick Walsh, never told me anything on defense, what I could or could not do, except in one one uh, walkthrough, we ran this call. It's called five Tampa sticks. What it is, is it's for TCU, and I should have said this off the bat, two is five and five is two for most defenses. So five uh -huh. is chapter two. Two is your robber coverage. Is the, and I'm talking not like one robber. I'm talking like the Virginia Tech old school inverted half stuff. Okay. Tampa sticks is we're going to line up normally and then back up one yard in front of the sticks up to 10 yards. The only time in the history at Sarah where Patrick ever remotely said anything to me good or bad about defense was we played Tampa sticks. It was third and 11 on a Wednesday or a Thursday practice in our walkthrough. We, we did TCU purple ball where the assistants come up with the plays. I don't know what's coming, so I have to call the game like it's like it's the game. And they hit us on a on an out that broke and uh, got a first down, and Patrick turned to me and goes, that's not my favorite call. And I was like, all right, that's the closest <laughs> thing he's ever gotten to telling me I can't do something. But this is what's interesting about the coverage. It's third and 15. Uh, I'm sorry, third and 13. Um, but I don't think they get the first year. I think they're one year short. Yeah, so it does I its think job. We, have a, we have a bus too, actually. This was our, we get to this play about three or four times this game. And this was our heavily designery play. We called this four switch Tampa wheel. And that the slot, the number two should be on a wheel. He should not be breaking inside right there. 
he should be running right up the sideline. Oh, I see um, what you're saying. Oh, that's yeah, a good you're concept. Yeah, you guys in the same spot. Yeah. We get to this call about four times this game, I think. And this was like our – we thought we had a good one here. We like we thought we were going to be able to pepper that route throughout on every third down. Nah. And then, then we – and, uh, yeah, you can see it comes up a yard freaking short. <laughs> how, pissed are, how pissed are you in 2012 or 2022 realizing you only kicked a field goal here? I think we missed – did we miss this field goal too? We, Let's see. One of these we missed. Yep, you did. If it's still fourteen to ten, you missed. Son it. of, son of a bitch. Yeah, I know. And that was a yeah. It wasn't even that long of a field goal either. It was like a thirty-eight yarder or something like that. Yeah. Little so thing. like that, that play we really had. Uh, like we that was the switch releases. We were trying to take advantage of the match rules on there, and that's why we thought we can get that. That's Tampa to us is a Tampa beating coverage. It's a high low play. Um, so it's a two high beater, switch the releases, and then we put a, the backside on a curl four. That's what the four route the route tree is. Now you're going to get field G army wide smoke. So again, you're setting the front to the field, slanting the front to the boundary, bringing one guy off the edge. And then what this allows is, and TCU does this a lot is they play zero coverage and they only bring five, which allows these two linebackers to play this one guy. So instead of like bringing the guy and having him read out, you let him add on late. Um, but this bunch creates a problem. The end now has to play in a nine technique. Well, he doesn't have to, but he does. He gets dug out of there. Ball yeah, comes back. And, you know, it's funny. And he still makes the tackle on this. Like yeah. watching this again, I don't remember our reason for that. Um, right as I'm watching this back through, I think we'd have been a whole lot better off letting him play that as a five technique. Uh, the few times we've seen it, it very likely could have been worried because you guys were a big, heavy outside zone stretch and you made a bunch of plays doing that. And that is probably also why we were doing so much tank early in the football game, so much mm -hmm. over adjusting to the tight end side of everything uh, was to play the outside zone plays that you guys ran where reality mm -hmm. where you're really hitting us is weak side is inside zone cutback or kind of a mid zone cutback play where you start wide and kind of bring it back. Mm-hmm. Also, mm -hmm. what this allows is this free safety has this guy. I mean, 48 doesn't look like a vertical threat to me. He's got the neck roll going. Big uh, 10 tight end of the year a couple of years later. Was he really? <laughs> yeah. He was like a designated hitter, though. It was like, you know, like he only got in there. Like he would get the pass routes when he was the, the 1A on the concept. It's yeah. just it's but just an interesting. You're not wrong. Thing. You're not wrong, though. He yeah. ran like a 488 like a 240 pounds he was not some physical freak <laughs> tight g shove stack Ooh, leck that, there's there, there you go shove stack so now the backers are actually you can see it from the end zone the back the backers are playing the other way now mm -hmm. and you can mm -hmm. see some of the adjustments now of hey we're getting tired of this shit yeah we're going no, i mean it's it really <laughs> really shows up midway like i said some of the adjustments made in the second quarter and then into the second half made a pretty big second difference half. for us in the game i, I love yeah. this he's at seven yards on second oh, yeah. and four and he's got this guy vertical this is quarters blue solo oh those he safeties sees him, like he sees him blocked the rest of the game <laughs> oh he's got the drive open yeah so this yeah this was drive and you can tell so John Clay, the back back there, he has protection responsibilities, but he's supposed to go four strong here um, on a swing. You can see him rally to it at the right. end. But yeah, this is just this is just a four strong drive concept. It's so funny what routes you end up hitting. Like the, this play was designed to, to hit the basic dig. Kendrick's on it, and of course it goes underneath. It's just like the play you practice for, and it's like, oh yeah, we're hitting a third option on it. All right, we got Outlaw, Double Tag, Scratch, Silver, Bullet Speed, Zero Press, Leck. So what does that mean? That means the defense is going to line up in double threes. They're going to go to the A gaps. The backer will hit the B gaps. This also allows the scratch call tells the defensive tackles, as I go inside, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for the back on screen. The ends are going to take the back if he flares. What does that allow? That allows him, because in, in in straight zero, he would have the running back. This allows him to play middle of the field. So it's all about bringing six and still playing with the middle of the field, guys. So you basically have a four-way on the back. It's one of my favorite things to do. 
And what it does is with that one little tag can add versatility to your calls. This is a great short yardage, 10 personnel zone stopper with this guy on the back coming down playing. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden you've turned it into a pass pressure by changing a few simple words. Well, and, and this is the age old conversation. I know you and I are big TCU language guys. I mean, that's kind of the root of what I've always believed in this. All this is, is I think it was a green call for one for maybe Alabama or somebody, basically the rush is picking up the running back is what all those words mean is the somebody in the rush, the tackles are picking up the running back inside the defensive ends are picking him up on flares. Yep is what all of that means and it's actually a very rare concept i mean i've studied a shitload of different defenses and i've yet to see one that does it like that they'll put the blitzer on the back they'll put mm -hmm. del green dog and like most defenses would put the backer to the back let him go and let the guy away go add no those guys are hitting it and those d tackles and it's really great especially in high school if you have defensive tackles that aren't are great at rushing the passer anyway you set the G, the 2I, to the back, who's going to probably get double teamed anyway, right? He's not going to get there anyway. And, in fact, Bump told me towards the end, they just let him spy. Like, I am get, I yeah. feel double teamed. If it's big on big, I feel double. I'm going to I'm gonna sit back, and I'll be the spy. I'm not going to get through. So it allows those guys, you waste blockers, and uh -huh. then you can roll out, and you can let the guys are going to rush rush we got another clip of wide dogs coming to the field you can see the running back there too that that was that number three run of the outbreaker again that's what we were doing out of the one by three and you could see that blitz is james white who's actually a really good pass protection back this he's a freshman here and he was actually pretty decent he thought he was going to be a hero here and he thought he was really good with the protection here but actually he's wrong and he's going to the wrong guy because you can see that slide working left and that linebacker is his all the way. He tries to rally mm -hmm. back to it, but he thought he thought he was being a hero. He was like, "Oh, I'm going to be extra here and help pick up this blitz." That's mm. actually almost wrong. <laughs> it, was, it was a kill shot on the QB. All right, we got we got split zone now into the blitz. Just gums everything up. Mm -hmm. This is the this is why a lot of the TC would mix up the smoke versus the dogs. You could see the disadvantage of having a guy like Tank Carter who's phenomenal player blitz where he has to read out you can set him back and he can go make this because he's burying himself here well, he's not burying himself it's the call he's supposed to blitz you can see where the problem rely he can't bonus up and go anywhere again the backside linebacker he tries to go back with this but it's a zero blitz you got to play your gap that allows who's is Zeit, is that zeitler i can't remember i'm going to like so Mo moffitt's left guard and then how about these the right two guard. as a college line left guard and left tackle holy shit and for some reason like... i'm thinking you guys had one of your backup guards got drafted that year to the cowboys he did he did uh bill yeah. nagy yeah because yeah, we had him he played he started like four or five yeah. games he was a jumbo tight end yeah 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 he stuck yeah. around for a little bit too here's a fantastic spill by my man right here this is how you spill the football he, he only gets one for one but he he makes it go around Fullback's coming. It's counter with the tight end and the Y pulling. Or it's actually, no, it's that power. It's that power, extra power play. Yeah. But yeah. 84 just goes now. Yeah. <laughs> he takes out the fullback. You've got the whole outnumbered to the weak side right here. They're able to get through. Gumming all up, <sighs> two-yard loss. Yeah. That's what that spill yeah. does. I mean, when you can yeah. effectively do that, it – Mucks it, it all up. Everything. All right. One of my favorite calls. Back-to-back -back state championship interceptions. 16 and 17. One was the blitzer had the back, and um, they tried to junk a screen in the ground, and he picked it up. The other one was a screen away, and the end broke. This is called wide speak or double speak. What you're going to get is you're going to get two guys off the edge. Actually, it, it should be... How do they do it? Did you do it? With, I think you did it with the. Uh... So this is out of the dime package. So it's the strong safety in the S2. It's it's an over call. So you got two DBs in the game. So it's, it's a dime call for us. He has the running back. Um, and I think we actually put the defensive end on the running back, which we didn't do out of dime very often. Mm -hmm. And we're playing our five jam stuff to it. Our batchers are going to sling to two and to three. And I'll play yeah. cover two over here. 
They actually end up, so I think it's uh, the field linebacker. They should push this with that three out fast, and he should end up pushing through. So the Jeez. that linebacker should widen with this out route. He like the the arrow route there by that tight end is open. Like that's the one that kind of mm -hmm. comes open. The corner should come off of that thing late, uh, but you can see the backer kind of gets caught up in no man's land. He we got one linebacker kind of doing his own thing right there. Did you have the corners take three and five jam, or did you just push it between the two the two guys? So. No, he should he should reroute this thing unless you get into like the keep calls and all that stuff that came later. He sh he's the flat defender. Like he should reroute that number one and ultimately come off on that shoot route. Uh, I can't tell if that's Tank or Tanner should play the curl. Oh, it's it's Coleman thirty three is actually the one that gets it right. Good. What's funny is one man uh, again again we're trying to. Uh play off our own personnel formation tendencies here. Cause when we used to go, we usually go Y off like we are here. That's our heavy, heavy, either sprint out or seven man pass pro where, mm -hmm. where, you know, tight and say that. And I remember we were trying to bait you guys here like that. Hopefully you had a call or something against it. And we, but we run like a normal six man pro out yep. of it. And then you see on the backside, yeah, we just tag tune on a, uh, what we call a burst seven, um, burst seven route, old North Turner terminology. First and 10, 22 personnel. We got wide dogs again coming from the field. So we have four from a side. Play action pass. We get uh, dogs, no dogs. My least favorite call where the backer does not go. Not great. Yeah. The, the tight ends are running scissors. I don't know what you guys called it. Yeah, I think it's cross country. Yeah, it's a, this play is, I mean, if you can protect it, this is one of the hardest plays. I don't care what oh, cover. Sure. <laughs> yeah. It just oh, takes a long time to, to play it out. Yep. Really, what saves us on this, honestly, is being in a is being in that bulldog package. So we're in another, we're in our bulldog package right now, where we have an extra yep. strong safety in the game again, and he ends up seventeen, who's now our S two boundary strong safety. He ends up kind of cross reading this thing, and saves the day on the back side of this. Like that's not his guy, but he just yep. finds work and. And I think and that's I a big part of coaching defense is teaching guys to be aware and make everybody else right. Yep, fall off in the things. I mean, that's what I know. That's because th I remember putting this play in. If you notice, we've taken these shot plays right outside that red zone. You know, that's the typical yeah. shot play zone. And 48's in the game. You know, this is a designer of designer plays. This is like we were taking a shot here. And I remember we thought that would pop right here. Like, and he should take it high in a perfect world, but he's not expecting anybody over there. You know, so yeah. just like you say, it's funny, like recalling what we thought was going to happen and then just kid making a play. Like, that's really what it is being heady. Re remember this again. for the last play of the game. Yep, 48. With, in him the game. Going, <laughs> with him going inside like this and not keep going. Because what should happen is, right, he should keep going. He should add, you should get two off the edge. But the end stops yep. and comes back outside. Tank doesn't go. 28 just does freakish effort and gets it down okay we're i'm gonna start going fast here's Let's a delay go. screen to kendrick's we got quarters great read by the backside linebacker you got the alert of four strong yeah. they both go so now he become he's gonna push out he's gonna become the short wall so he's looking for anything coming back somebody release for him just somebody go <laughs> he's right on it yeah but he make he gets loose and gets five yards i know it's a great job that this play we called Michigan because we put it in the first time against Michigan. So that's this was uh, another this is another great yep, name, oh, another right. great name. <laughs> and all of our screens started with an M for whatever reason. Just over the years, every one they added ended up being an M word. So Michigan worked great. <laughs> Here's another five Tampa sticks. Another play where it's just Here's a little short of the sticks, but I mean it. It's a completion, but I I believe they do not get the first. This one's actually closer, I think. Uh, you could see the stunt here. They call this double snake. So you're going to get both guys rushing in here. It's a it's an ET stunt. But what's going to happen is these guys are going to mush like they're coming inside and then get back out. I love this concept. If you get guys that can pull it off. They run into each other. These guys cannot pull it off. <laughs> he has enough time to smoke a pack of cools back there. He's just chilling. Yeah, just hanging out. Nice yeah. little bullet. 
but it's short of the first down. Yeah. All right, first and ten. Or no, no, they did get the first down this one. I'm we sorry. got it. Yeah. I'm sorry. All right, here's another B slant. We're balanced, so it's going to be coming from the field. Another field pressure counter into the play. Or that, I'm sorry, the power extra play to, into the play. Yeah. Watch the safe. This is what's awesome. God. <laughs> I love this. The seven yards. This is this is 2011, baby. Just yep. New Year's Day. <laughs> you could tell this is 2011 Big Ten football. We love got the it. free safety getting to see in the down block. He's just going to come down and make the tackle at the line of scrimmage. Fast, Dad. Or not make the tackle, but make contact at the line of scrimmage. That kid was a finalist for the Thorpe Award and didn't even bother doing a pro day because he knew he was about a four nine forty. He was an incredibly <laughs> smart football player. He was an amazing kid and amazing football player. Yeah, but yeah. was not necessarily an elite athlete. Here's a little wind back, way, though. wind back play for the first time. You get a little wide trade. Did he, you think he lined up on the wrong side? The 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 the, the tempo that he goes across. I think he lines up on the wrong side. He's like, oh shit. So again, I think Tolzien called it in wrong, and then oh, he was okay. like, oh shit, I got to fix this, and that's what he's doing. And you can see, you can even see Bielma up top ready to call a timeout. Like, What'd you guys he, call this play? Up. Let me just see what this is. It's just like, lead, right? It's it's like so. A, this would have been, yeah, this would have been seal. So this would have been fire. Leads fire lead zebra seal, I believe, would have been all the tags on it. Oh, this is key. Oh, we called it we called it key. So that little wind back. He he's gonna go, he's essentially finding the guy. So he's key, there's a key block he has to make, and it depends on the front. Like we block it off all wrong. That's not how this should be looking right now. So the running back will be the receiver will be getting the backside. Yeah, and he'll mm. just lead to the second level. It's like a scissors play. Here's also. another number three running and out. You got third and eight. All right, one of my other favorite calls. This is called frog dog switchback. What does this mean? This was put in for I believe. Oh, like, like me, correct me if I'm wrong. This was an Oklahoma thing when they had Gresham. Yeah. Where they yep. would line him up as a tight end and then flex him out. So the the thought is if he's the tight end, it's going to be cover zero. So you're going to run the dogs, meaning a dog is a backer and a safety from the same side. If he lined up in a receiver position, it would switch and the backers would run four, four from a side. The switchback meant the end away would come around and take the running back, which allowed, again, to get a post safety. So you're bringing six and you're playing with the middle of the field guy. And this concept has become a staple for my for me over after that. Like We started doing this a ton at Millsaps and had a lot of success with it. And this is just that three out play hunter hunt as we called it. Hunt Girl in the fine scene. space. And actually I, Lance Kendricks does a good job here because he you should be getting to twelve on this route and but unless it's pressure. And then you shorten it. So he actually he's wow. short. He still is short a little bit, but it was actually pretty heady of him to like speed it up a little bit. And this is off the back, so this is they called frog. Anything frog meant to the back. Go now. Yeah. Good play. Yeah. I believe this is a penalty. That play was very NFL-y as far as offense and defense right there. Yeah. <laughs> as far as protection, as far as blitz, as far as coverage, that felt very bang-bang. Another oh, and then the second half, we're backed up every drive. That was that was a lot of fun to recreate. Right, I'm going <laughs> to skip around a little bit. No, All right, so we got a little YY wing action going on here. We're bringing the safety. From what play number are you on right now, Vass? I'm on 40. 40, okay. I'm trying to go as fast as I can because no, you're I know good. we've got like 20-something plays left. And, and if you guys – listen, I'm going to stay till the end. If you guys got to go, you've been generous with your time. I know Leck, you're I'm in the good. middle of spring football, or not spring football, but you're trying to get up to speed at a new gig. Nate has probably a lot of things going on, but I'm going to stay till the end. You guys have been great with your time, but um, I'll try if, to. If that care package of Bud Light and M&M shows up, then I'm sticking around. If not, then... <laughs> my wife just texted me and said she ordered us Chick-fil-A, so I'm pretty fired <laughs> up. So I got another good 10, 15 minutes in me, so. All right, so we got what thirteen personnel here? You'll stretch, hey. stretch, t. Uh, oh shit, oh, the center's going. Cool. Oh, we're so, going, baby. So you got tight end wing and tight end to this side. 
direction so it's tight g so i'm guessing this would be the overarching That's indicator right, yeah. gonna slant that way get a run through in a tfl as you can see though the slanting when it works it works uh -huh. this is a great job because i actually get gapped here uh -huh. with the no, pole this is what and, happens and, when you have an NFL linebacker? He's a really, I mean, 40 tank was a, he had a really good, he had a really good career. I mean, yeah. He covered a lot of mistakes. <laughs> so the direction. So trigger. We're playing five wall here. So again, it's going to be man match cover two on this side. The backers are going to shove in the box to create a four, three look. We got. Are we getting? We getting some some play action uh, action here. So that's yep. a busted assignment in the in the for the linebackers because we should have that outside linebacker to the boundary right there. He should come off mm -hmm. on this curl. He should be pattern matching this curl. He's caught mm -hmm. taking the cheese and sucking up on run. I mean, he should the, be working that curl route right now. Yeah, this we call the Z five bait, and, and the bait route is you're running a curl into the tackle box. And we were really original at Wisconsin. And you have the wheel, but this oh, I like really that. does. Bait into the tackle. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Get your bait in the tackle box. And then you got the five route, the deep comeback on the field. That's your bailout throw. But I would have called that X curl and been fired. <laughs> like this this fired concept, me. though, this this causes a lot of head popping for defenses, I've always noticed. Because just because of what you said, really, what happened is the action that the action going towards that side. You got the wheel action and you got the curl action, but then also the back releasing to that side. You create the triangle on that yeah. towards the boundary there. And against this types of coverage, against quarters coverages, you know, two high ish coverages, you can really just, they've really pops a lot of heads. Cause a lot of times, actually, that check down, if they play it right, that check down will go mm -hmm. up the sideline for 20 yards. Yeah. Um, they'll just be running wide open uh, for whatever reason, you know, just causes head poppage. You can see the how the, the right. half safety right here, we talked about this earlier, about how they don't just run out of there. Yeah, yeah. But watch, he sees the tight end go out knowing it's not going to be verticals. And watch him kind of sit. He, it, this, this looks like quarters. If, to me, it looks like it quarters or palms. That he's, They're playing too deep. I think also part of it is he realizes that that guy's wide open too. <laughs> so you might want to yeah. clamp down on that. The other thing that's, I think, lost, uh, and just from a defensive teaching standpoint, if this is against what most offenses we see in college football today, and it's out of shotgun, and you do run this exact same concept, it's an easy read for the linebackers because the yep. offensive line is not really selling run fake very well. What sells run fake is the quarterbacks under center. Those yep. under center, like play action does not, like that's one thing that I, I'm a firm believer Real play action does not exist out of shotgun. Like you can't it sell it in the same way you can under center. Even the timing becomes so much different for the, from a quarterback's perspective. It times up and it feels so much better when you're doing it from under center. When you do it in the gun, everything feels tight. Everything just, mm -hmm. you know you don't get that ebb and flow from the defense and just how the routes are with your drop. This is white tight bow slant box back wide singer five jam lack. Here we go. We got a little slot. Didn't run a bunch of the, didn't, didn't run much of this in this game. It was a staple for my entire time there. It's probably the most dog the most wide dogs we ever ran and the least wide stinger we ever ran. So that for that play we were just talking about where the kid made a nice call and ran back with forty eight, you know, mm -hmm. with the kind of cross country. This is the yeah. the twenty one version of that. It's the same, yeah, same. idea from us. But, you know, and we can see he hits tune here coming across. But, yeah, well, same, same corner, idea, though. This is the pattern. I mean, these, these routes are hard to defend regardless of the coverage. Oh, yeah. The corner should – that's a cover two corner. He should not chase the vertical. He should come off on that thing. He's got a high safety over oh, top yep, of it. Yep. I think it's a lock call on the backside. It could be. No, you're, you're probably right. They probably did lock it. I'm trying to see if you can see the communication. But, yeah, I, I would not – I mean, I don't know. It could be. I would never teach my guys to lock that because you got two receivers over there. You got tight end, and this would be why you wouldn't lock it. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, we got outlaw bullet say directions again. So we got wing twins, another 12 personnel call, first and 10. Tight end's going to motion across. 
Yeah, or that's the piece you guys say across. So do you see the the adjustment made with the motion here, Chris? You'd asked about that call earlier. Yeah. So we're slanting the three technique, whichever three technique. So right now, go back to top. Oh, I see. Yeah. So go right now, the three technique to the field is tagging to the mm -hmm. A gap, and we're blitzing the B gap. So we're getting to a – now, once he goes across, now the three technique to the field is slanting A, or to the boundary slanting A, and the boundary linebacker is blitzing B. Got it. So as the we, we recall the blitz – the good thing is, I mean, it's it's simple communication. It's only a couple guys are doing it. Jesus. Oh, I thought he was going to break this. <laughs> Tackle legs. If you're going to miss, make a miss dramatically. We're just running split zone, right? Nate, yeah. whenever you check out, whenever you got to check out, man. Oh, no, you're good. I'm, let I'm, us, let uh, us know. I'm just I'm just crying uh, some of these plays. <laughs> All right, so we got tight tight G tank blue solo. Uh, so we're gonna motion across. They're not flipping. So again, it's gonna be solo, but the corner's not going over. So this safety is still gonna read number three. This corner is gonna read the tight end, but he wasn't flipping over like before. So now you can't tell what. So they've given you flip. They've given you clown. Now they're going, it's the same thing as flip solo, quote unquote, but it's just, it gives that look where you don't know what's going on. There's the zone. Mm -hmm. Again, you're slanting away from the play. And you watch 94 here. This is a really good redirect. Really, it's... 94 that's the, was 250 pounds. So that's a... <laughs> Let's see how he turns his back. Mm -hmm. He basically, I mean, has to hug him and it goes outside. Now, be, this is the problem with the tank call, though, because if you're playing your regular, we talked about this early on. Mm -hmm. If you're playing your regular technique, this guy disappears. And because they're climbing, his angle's so flat to get there. This guy should be in there and then the corner should clean it up. But because it is a tank, even if you try to redirect your beat on the first step, yeah. Really, what you should do is, and I know it's hard. Again, this is a corner. But when you see this, this guy should basically just fly his ass in there, right? I mean, yeah, you yeah. keep outside, like, you freaking go. But the, the other problem, the one problem in this defense is because it's segmented, this corner does not know he is slanting outside. He has yeah. to read it. Here's what I would tell you. I don't know if the corner's lining up wrong or if we had played it. Like, as I'm watching this, like, the base rule for him right now would be a C7 would be inside leverage on that tight end. And if he's inside leverage, that mm -hmm. changes too. But And he's he is either misaligned or, for some reason, we had him not doing that. Uh, but would you play a C7 without it? Because if you play a C7 and you play a 6 technique, you got nobody on the edge. I'm talking about with a tank like that. Like that would oh, be. Oh, but he doesn't know it's tank. That's that. So we had to start telling our DBs. Yeah. We started calling tank blue solo to let mm -hmm. them know if we saw tight ends. Hey, listen, man, you got it like like a two when he was the edge. Yeah. Listen, man, that the end slant outside. You got to fold your ass back in there because they're yeah. not used to doing that. They're used to playing the edge. No, it's a different concept. For but them. because it's it's a segmented defense and not everybody's getting the same call. That's where you can run into some issues. Here's Tai Chi mm -hmm. Blue Pitch against Near Eye Pro. Pass. Mm -hmm. Offset back. Is this just yeah. no? You got to come back over here. I would say, is this nine eighty nine? I wish. No, it more or less though. I mean, it's it's nine nine eighty nine. Is just you know doubles tax. So right here, it'd just be five eighty five eighty nine, or really yeah. he's weak. So nine eight nine eighty five. <laughs> Is this being um, read because he's off, or is it? You think this is called? Oh, this was called. This was locked all the way, and uh, yep. So it's go to the go ball. If you don't like the go ball, throw it to your comeback. You know, you know, you have to flip your head. That's that's your bailout throw. Not that usually guys do that. They'll just check it down. But that's in theory what you're supposed to do. Is that and priest? Too uh, or did he graduate already? Is that uh, no? Who's number seven on this team? Seven Larry? is uh, Greg McCoy. Oh yeah. Good play there. No, that is great play. All right, we got another uh, snap of wide dogs into the bunch. Play. Ooh, I'm a little scared about this. We get weak zone. First play of the game. Same play. 
Yeah, yep. I, I, absolutely. That's the difference of it. The only thing that bugged me about TCU at this time is their linebackers alignment would give everything away. So remember that we t- we had this talk in a meeting room. Yeah. Like you were oh, like, we do did. you think they know when we're slanting? I'm like, yes, I think they know <laughs> because A and B meant we weren't slanting. Stacked meant we were. And then if they were slid way the hell over, it was slid way the hell over. Yeah, no, there's always one of those conversations you have every year. No army. <laughs> that also hurts too. Yeah, army, this backer no army. thinks 98 he has the A gap. Bad on this one. So th- this formation has gotten us. Like ninety eight should, especially on this call, he's got to be going fast down the line. Like that formation is getting us, making some of our kids maybe overthink or over adjust, just not play fast. And this, that yeah, and this is the danger because this guy, and this is the problem. Why? And they kept alternating. Is he's supposed to blitz the B gap? Well, shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We we taught our guys. A gap, you don't read out unless it's uh, unless it's egregious, like it's toss. Yeah, yeah. B or C, you better get your ass out of there, and that's the problem. Yeah. When you get a guy like this that plays hard. It's all well and good until they yeah. run their ass out of the play. Here's another uh, dog switchback with the corner coming. So it's going to be instead of the backers running the four from a side where he's going to come off the edge and he's going to go to the back. He's actually going to go inside and the corner's going to come off the edge. Was this another frog dog switchback call? Yes. Okay, I was wondering when I watched this because we end up in zero. Like, we don't communicate this correctly. This should be a switchback and the corner should stay in coverage. because I was wondering why you had two guys (laughs) going through the B game. Oh, that's right. That's right. They played zero. This is a busted assignment by our guys. Like they, the corner should not be running on the blitz, and that boundary safety should be free. <laughs> Looks good. No, to you me. just said your your inner Rex Ryan coming out, your inner Buddy Ryan yeah, coming out yeah. here. Just two guys through the gap. Why not? Well, and also oh, that I defensive remember. end. So that Stansley, who is an incredibly talented player, but a total rep guy. Uh, yeah. He's he should be slanting. Those two guys are supposed to be off the edge. But this again <laughs> comes back to making him right. That's why those guys are coming back inside. You mean yeah. you didn't design it with these three guys outside the tackle? <laughs> no, not feeling that. Mm-hmm. It actually oh. works pretty good. I mean, it works right. Yeah, it's a doozy. All right, all so right, now Chris. Chris, offset back. Offset What's up, back. Lex? Chris, you got to pause it here. I got to get on my special teams coordinator's soapbox here. So okay. the play that Jane, maybe the most important play of this game, we won't see. Right before this, we punted the football and it was going into the end zone. Mm-hmm. A kid by the name of Malcolm Williams, who was a backup corner that hardly played a single snap outside of special teams in his career, made an incredible diving play to keep that mm-hmm. ball from, going, from being a touchback. Uh, and he, he ended up getting drafted in the sixth round strictly as a special teams player to the Patriots. Mm. But that play in my opinion, won the football game for us. Like, And you're going to see this field position battle that we had the entire second half. That play yeah. keeps them pinned the entire second half. Every first down was a battle in the second half. <laughs> like That was a slog. But you have offset back. You know, you're going to get play action or something. Oh, here it comes again. So, oh, shit. You can see everybody uh, trailing. So this is now set fullback. So now it's they're setting the front to the back and slanting towards the back. I'm guessing if that's the name. Oh shit! Yeah, Scott does it. We end up hitting a, a deep comeback at eight yards. That should be it. <laughs> That's how far he had to come back for it. But you're not expecting the 82 to pop wide open over the middle of the field when we practice this play. You know, for weeks on end. You know, we thought that wheel of the sideline would be coming open and not the tight end running right down the seam. <laughs> shit, he gets rid of this ball with because it's zero. So this is zero pitch. So these guys can add now. So yep. basically it turns into it, it, the count it's 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 zero it's zero free man that's what they call man free so man man backers have the two backs and technically yeah. it's basically i mean it's the it's all combos where that 28 takes the first thing out to the field i mean it's all so oh is that what has, it is okay yeah like it's all banjos when it against a formation like that we got another B slant coming, so now I, I think a couple of these get screwed up. So now you get I wing, so it should be slanting to the tight end. 
blitzing from the split inside here but they trade so again the front changes but the blitz is still going to come because now it's going to come from the wide side because it's balanced so got bulldozer running up in there <laughs> good old power <laughs> all of a sudden i'm like wait i think he got stuck it's like it's like uh tom cruise cleared the smoke Days of <laughs> just thunder. Out just of coming out of there Oh, they actually turn on that. The oh, no, they blocked down. He should be slanting down into that gap, too. Oh, well, and he kills it. This He kills you right here, too, because if yeah. he comes down, that might be a TFL. Yeah, no, he may get a TFL if he goes the right way. The misery. Man. It's like rock em, sock em robots. Oh, I know. All right, you got Cobra Go. So we're in the four down front. Everybody's getting their ass up in the air and going. You don't have to assign anybody to the back because it's quarters. You're going to motion. No flipping. Yeah, well, no well, words of the great Larry Sanders show. No flipping. Yeah, under center on third and long. Got to love it. Got If you do this in the NFL, they fire your ass. Yeah. Hey, That's it almost gets the first down, though. I know. Chris had a story that when he first got to Wisconsin and he, he played there as well, he accidentally called something from the wrong call sheet, like on his red zone calls. And he had a run play. He went 22 personnel run play on third and seven. And he goes, not a single person in the entire stadium in Madison batted an eye. Everyone's just like, yeah, yeah. Full back on the field on third and seven. Yeah, totally. That's what we do here. Not a single person bad at night. He was like, okay, next play, fourth and one. All right. No one noticed that. My bad. Yeah. They said it was just like, it just made a mistake on the call sheet. Had looked at the wrong section and no one bad at night at Wisconsin. If you're can, in 22 personnel. Can we get an long. appreciation for the, sh the shade and the wide nine together? <laughs> and they run hey, into it oh my god six techniques i mean they've been playing nothing but uh, six techniques all day long and they finally yeah. get a pass rush call and these assholes run it anyway <laughs> like that's what he's thinking and he trips <laughs> he basically trips yeah. over his own guy oh. all right here's another 5 gm cheat so we got unbalanced same look again the x is off or over the z i, I don't know who that is the X position is running the jet. <laughs> this must have been a check, Lack, because two times we've seen this, it's turned, it's they've run wide stinger, five jam cheat. It very easily could have been. And like when, when they go on balance, we might have automatically checked to this. Also, again, look where you're starting off. Yeah, backed up. 28 should flatten out on this because he is the spill guy. He should yep. be coming flat down the line here. You got the corner taking the fly. So if they try to need bullshit, I mean creativity. Sorry, I forgot we have an offensive guy on here. I got to be nice. We're splashing the water. That's what we're doing. We're splashing yeah. the water a little. He bit. would take that. Yeah, we got showed it. a lot of we 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 do a lot of unbalance so and do this jet stuff. So yeah, this was a play we got to throughout the year. We didn't really run Bob out of it though. You know, weed zone. It would be more maybe different plays. This may be a penalty. Let's see. Like, yeah, I don't have yeah, we get one here. here. I didn't have any date on this play. I was like, okay, something's up. All right, we get another wide stinger versus twins. We like that. I hated wide stinger versus uh, pro. In fact, we, we stole out a page out of the Stanford game plan when y'all played. Get, we played read side Bronco to it. Cause yeah, no, that was, I, a, I, was a the great only formation that. that I hated versus was the eye. But yep. now you could see the backer's going to walk out of the box. So they're exchanging here. He's going to go. And it's going to be, again, man match cover two over this side. It's just such a great blitz. You get an edge blitz with basically two man. Or if they switch, it's cover two. You get the best pass coverage in football and an edge blitzer. Okay, so this was the pain in the ass part about this. Was teaching this guy on the run. You're going to spill, but in pass, you got to contain. It's an expensive concept, as Leck always would say. You Like somebody asked me recently, they're trying to put in a simple defense. Like, should we put the five jam package in? I'm like, no. You can't just run this shit sometimes. No. But you can see him come uh, in and then duck in and then get back out. You got to get back outside on the quarterback. Misses it. The misery. Scrambles. Wow. Let's look at the coverage. 
Deez, more oh, no, frustrating. Just beaten side. More frustrating. We had two guy, two backs that are just it's just full slide protection. They're just supposed to seal the edge. He splits it. <laughs> he and splits he still it. gets out. Tolzine uh, with the wheels. No one is happy after this play. Like no, no <laughs> both sides of the ball. I would agree. Yeah. Both sidelines are just, pissed. Yeah. <laughs> How about this box back? We're, we're, so technically, because it's two backs. Wait, where's the other linebacker? He, oh, he's already slung, slung out of the box. Yeah, he's he has the back first in. back this way. He has the first back to his side, second back away. Watch this DN. So this is what box back means. Because they're standing, he's going to box the run because they're usually spill mm-hmm. players. And then I take the running back. Watch this shit. Because he has to rally, Fuck r- that. relate. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, oh, we fine. talked about earlier, an eat. This is what, if these guys were to block, that's what it turns into, an eat. Yeah. So oh, Matt, uh, somebody was back. asking, oh, do, are they supposed to go slower? And this is why. Because this I've is how it's done. i guy so- fall into so many sacks in my career where he's not, where he just ends up play like this. He doesn't get it this time, but he ends, he's about to. Like, he, I've seen those guys just yeah. fall into sacks just by working to where the running back's at. Here's another snap of five Tampa sticks. Curls. Yep, curls. Curls. All I really want is curls. And we st- God, we still got the freaking flat route tight end, just like the last time we did this. Uh, when we did the Y off, made it look like yep. seven man pro, and then we just released the tight end right away to the flat. Or really, it's not flat. It's yeah, it's an out. Yeah, that corner staying too heavy on the dig by one. He yeah. should be coming off of that. Anyway, yeah, Scott goes to the right spot here. Like this is where we wanted it to yep. go, but man, it's it's rewatching this. It's funny. It's just what you notice. So lightning, I'm actually surprised y'all ran this. So lightning is a split inside call, which is I'm very surprised with this, where it's just a dead call, meaning it's not. Hey, if they line up balance, you do this. It's just yeah. a straight up split inside. To play it, you're bringing yeah, I mean, you're bringing a guy off the yep. edge. You're you're bringing five and playing cover zero. And again, it's a stop run play action. Is it a tight G? Is it a tank? Tight G tape? tank lightning. Yeah. So the uh, only thing but I they say actually to that come is- from this side. Yeah, but the only thing I'd say, like, when you wonder why, again, they've been hitting split inside, run side. That should put the defensive end in the B gap. Now, this is double tight, so you don't have a split inside anymore. Okay, this is a bust. This is a bust because you have the line, so it's set to this guy, so the blitz should come from over here. Yep, I'm wide. Let let this thing play out once. So, (laughs) he's going in. He's going out. He should be blitzing. He doesn't. This guy blitzes. So this is a, a formational blitz problem. We're calling a split inside, and they they come out and double tight. Now, there's rules that they all should play, and how you drew it up is correct. But that those are things that take a lot of time to get good at. And, and the truth is, when you don't see that much double tight over the course of a year, and all of a sudden you do it, the double tight formation is probably what screws them over on this. And this is why exactly. this call exists. B and slant would have been the B lightning would if it's go. balanced, just screw it. Bring it from the field. Yep. yep. This is that same when we were talking about uh, he had backed up, had the play action, he hit the curl route, the bait route. This is the exact same concept. that We just did it out of dot or ace instead of motioning a tight end over. But the exact same play. Mm. And, then, and then we just tagged uh, the Z on a go route. But okay, alas. We have Ten plays left. We got roll, so they're playing three deep to the bunch. We're playing cloud on the back side. Straight drop. I love this. Under center bunch. Got all oh, yeah. of 2011 football. Under center bunch. Hide that back split. Second and Going 10. Four, four strong. Let's hide that back split. And then I think we run drive again, right? Yeah. Lance, the tight end, got confused here because you're you curl. It depends if you read it single high, two high. He should just keep running. Actually, there's coming back enough. to the ball, and then there's this. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> Way too well coached. That's the thing. Sometimes be cool, guys. <laughs> Sometimes don't have to run all the way back to five yards. Another. So we Man, got a frog dog. We thought, we thought we'd have drive all day. I remember that because we just because of what you guys ran. It was just because mm. that would make sense against what against it to too high beater. Gotcha. Yeah, and the four strong element really screws things up too if yep. the guys don't play it yep. right. 
So the drives are great concept. Dog switchback. <laughs> The tight end is not in the tight end position, so it's going to be, instead of bringing the safety in the backer, it's going to be both backers off the edge. He's going to go to the side of the blitz. This end is going to come around and take the running back. If the running back, for some reason, goes this way, this guy takes him. If he flares, the blitzer will take him. And if he blocks inside and steps up, he will work around and take him. Good protection. Ball gets knocked down. We'll watch it from the end zone. This was a theme. This game. And you'll see it on the last play. He is supposed to go and take this guy down so we can get yeah. those guys off the edge, and he doesn't do it. Well, and 35 is running the bad blitz path here, too. You can see. Yeah, he's the, blitzing the like line has got to stay in their slant. Like that three technique mm. comes back out of it. I mean, if that's a running quarterback, that's. Yeah. Su suicide. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is the next year with Russ. Oh yeah, Russ is gone. He might have hit his head on the goalpost on that one. Yeah. Here's another bullet say bullets direction. So you get tight end straight so into the boundary, and then he's gonna come back and run uh back to be a fullback. So big Gums boy John Clay. Yeah, our linebacker switched the blitz out about three times there. Maybe that all motion Oof. might have got us. A little yo-yo, yeah. John Clay, yeah. thirty-two, was pissed off because he thought he should been he he had been hurt and he was the guy going. He was Big Ten Player of the Year the year before, mm -hmm. and got hurt throughout the year. Monty Ball became a thing. James White was playing well, so yeah. he finally got in here like to run the ball, like because a couple times he's been in pass pro. So he is pissed. Right I keep here. forgetting yeah, he ran James like White. this whole drive. I yes, getting James White was on this team. Yeah, this is the drive where. Oh. John this, Clay is pissed on this drive, and you can see, yeah, like forever. you see, he runs. This is the this might be the last drive right here where he. This just, is, it is, I think, 40, 44 yard gain right here on split zone. Yeah. So you've got wide dogs again. So you're coming from the field. They run this split zone, cut the slant off. I think there was a bust in the slant as well. Go big boy. Oh, I thought he the, was, but then thick six right there. <laughs> unhitch, unhitch the wagon. Oh no, they they do it right. They just. The O line comes out playing possessed. You're too. Just like right now, like yeah. this drive, we got moved and we didn't yeah. tackle big boy. Like this is like the size definitely won out and had us. I don't know if we were worn out at this point, but but right now you can. I remember thinking after this drive, like I hope this don't go to overtime because yeah, uh, at this point you guys were moving us. It was over. Yeah. yeah, I remember it was like one of those things that was reminding me. This game reminded me of the old Bobby Bowden quote: "We didn't lose, we just ran out of time." <laughs> like yeah. I remember watching this from my couch, being like, "Oh shit!" Like had this, had this. Uh, I mean, I mean, look, look how mean this some bitch is right here. Look at that stance. He's yeah, oh, yeah. Watch the difference Too between 70. this guy and this guy. <laughs> He's like, "Let me avoid." Is that Ze was yeah. Zeitler on the team then, or is that after? Yeah, that's Ze Zeitler is that right guard. I can't believe I remember this shit. I need help. And Rick Ricky Wagner is the right tackle. He ended up playing, playing around the league a little bit. Now, we, now we're going back to flip. So first time we did the jet of dot here. Ah, we, a, little, a little stretch CT pitch. I love this play. Yeah, we call this uh, phony flex. Flex is the pin pull term, and then phony is the fake jet. How about the I, safety? I, God, this is so yeah. great. What, what's a safety come make this play? No, That'll be our guy, TJ Johnson, again, three. Like I said, he shows up all over the field in this one. Yeah. I know, and usually we, we run this in the Big Ten. I, I remember vividly ran against Minnesota in this very year and went for a touchdown. James White, same thing, and that safety started running with the jet motion on the opposite side. <laughs> it was just a walk-in from like 30 yards out, but not, not against TCU. Here's a little lot more wide dogs action. So you got four coming from the field, zone weak to the boundary. They do a better job of making the ball cut back. You can really watch the nose, just the nose right here, fight his ass off not to get reached. Yeah. He's like, fuck that. I'm, I, I don't care if I hit my head on the Gatorade cooler. I ain't getting reached. Uh -huh. Better there. And this is gap integrity. Really 
I mean, it just it makes. I mean, this is a weak side zone that cuts. Look where it cuts. That's to cut outside mm-hmm. the tight end. Now, I know it cuts back inside the second tight end, but like, if you're a defense, yeah. you're like, okay, I'll take that, right? I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, no, that's at the end of the day, you want that thing to come all the way back like that. Now we gotta mm-hmm. not like the forty-four yard run that hit right down the pipe. Yeah, five plays left. Four plays left. Uh, five, four, five. We got another dog switch back, so it's going to be coming to the back. Actually, no, I'm sorry. So this is going to be dog switch back, but this is now coming from the field. So you, 84 is in a flex receiver position, so the the Sam is going to run the edge. The Mike's going to go up the middle. Now mm. the end away from the pressure, the back is to him, so he doesn't have to loop as much. But the backers weren't adding. So was this a was this a dog? So I'm wondering if it, if it was a. You said this was the dog switchback dogs, call. It's why dogs be switchback. Gotcha. Yeah, it looks like our is it 35 is not written. And he was a, he was very talented, but a young player that has a bunch of missed assignments in this game. Mm-hmm. Played hard and did all those things. But actually, this may be. Yeah, it's Tanner. <laughs> like like he just he's. Really good football player, plays really hard, but you can see a young player has kind of made several mistakes like this right. where he's slow to come or not come mm-hmm. to the right spot. And you said his name was Tanner Brock? Yep. Here we go. Why, why, wing? Freshman. You're going to get Robert to this side, solo on the back side, so he's going to man up number three right here. Backside safety's poaching. We got one on one on the back side. Weak side zone. And there now is. that is the problem with having cover two, with having this safety off. I also think the safety's misaligned, the deep safety's misaligned. There should be somebody yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah, right? I know. Like, look at no, Kendrick. Yeah. She's like, <laughs> 84 is like, I have nobody to, re- to climb to, so I'm just going to help you mm-hmm. out. End up into a double on the defensive end. and Yep. And that's why you see so much under front versus that stuff. Because there's a little bit of a gap there, but at least you can latch onto those guys and mm-hmm. use them and use their momentum. Oh. All right, yeah, we you got have another... a bunch or, or or hip as we call it, hip, and you have a close, which is basically bunch anyways. Yeah, uh, of twelve, it, it's and you're not and you're setting it as an over. It's we're gonna run it. The offenses will run at the bubble until it pops. You know, and so like that's why it's, you just see weak zone, weak zone, weak zone, weak zone, weak zone. Uh, right. That safety is gonna not be in the fit. All right, so we got uh, S-Dogs, b Slant. So, again, we're coming from the split end side. You got the weak safety, or the strong safety who's actually aligned to the field. And the backer is going to go because it, there is a tight end wing surface. They motion back, so now the front should slide. But the blitz will remain the same. The blitzer will change gaps, but it's still these two guys are activated in the rush. The line does not adjust back. Not a winning business model. And now, Leck, you said that they may not have come back if that guy motions back. I think he's got to be on a tight. I think he's got to be down as a tight end to would was the rule. But you can see right here, and then these are the little games within the game. If that's if previously that guy's always been a down tight end. Uh-huh. And we, what the, here's the difference. Go back to the start of this. So the nose, the a gap he defends right now. He's crossing face, and if you go all the way to right before he snap it, like get him across the formation. Because that guy is a is in a fullback position, not a tight end position, we're still crossing face. If that were a shift and he put his hand down, that nose would stay to the weak side or to the to the field, and he'd be Got right it. there in that A gap between sixty six and seventy. So that's where the the call fixes a lot of problems. And then this adjustment, whether you guys meant to get to it or not, it it beats the call in some ways because mm-hmm. we're still we're getting three dudes across the center's face on that which creates a little bit of a problem there to the field. Oh, I'm sorry. I miscounted. There's three plays left. All right. So you got I slot. We got same call. This is when I think he called beat the same thing three times in a row. So again, it's <laughs> going to come from the split inside motion back to the field. So the pressure is going to come from the same side. You can see the line adjust so they can get thicker. So you, you see the same issue as last time. Or maybe he doesn't. I don't know. Let me let me look if they readjust. I thought I saw him slide back. 
I was I'm wrong. So no, no, but, it's he's got to be down for him to slide back when he's a slot like that or a fullback. He doesn't. And yeah. Scotty changed up the the cadence here, Tolzi, and I remember this. He went on the short, which for quarterbacks is you know, you know, there's blue eighty, blue eighty said hut, so it's blue eighty, blue eighty hut. Like so, you just take out that one extra count on it, and mm -hmm. I remember this. And it was just a throw a change up in there. I remember being like, you're very smart to be doing that with two minutes ago in the Rose Bowl. <laughs> just throwing a different cadence count out of nowhere. Blue pitch solo squeeze. So squeeze is press zone over here. You've got quarters. Solo backside safety's looking. I don't know why it's solo. There's this motion gets us into. Oh, I see. Actually. I see. Yeah. yeah. We had stretch lead. We called it. We call this flex, and you can see actually Scotty signal it at the beginning of the play or on the wide view. It's kind of funny. What's that now? So at the, at the very beginning from the wide view, you can see watch Tolzien flex his muscles. Like this play was called flex. So you see him like kind of like yeah. flexing right there. Yeah. So he's he's That's called awesome. flex. Flex rig and one other one. I can't dump. Those were our pin pole. What plays. was the last thing you said? Dump. Dump. D U M P. I have no idea why they were called that. That was just what Take we called them. <laughs> okay, here's the touchdown play. So we got B slant. So again, so now it's balanced. So it's going to come from the field. You got pin pull into the boundary away from the blitz. Running back cuts it back, or cuts it up, touchdown. Yeah, this is, and we've had some plays at TCU where we made plays. I think this is an example of where they're making oh, a play. Oh, shit. Yeah. They, well, that's... There's a great block by one of these pullers, and the running back kind of makes a play. Like, it's a... Mm -hmm. Well, and this doesn't help either. <laughs> yep. Slanting the wrong direction is never a winning business model. That is not a winning business model, folks. Especially against pit pole. That's yeah. yeah. He ends up taking one. Man, All right. Monty's just such Nate, a funny player I'm to sorry, man. Here it is. Uh, so we call this Mallard. Our red zone pass series was on all named after birds. So we had a duck, we had a loon, and this one was called Mallard. More Wisconsin than that. And you just yeah. were creating a high, a high low with the number three and number two. Unless it was called like that. Culver's. And what's that beard that's brewed locally in Madison? Oh, Spotted They're Cow. Spotted oh, Cow. So Every, everybody's spotted like, you got to so get, good. you got to get Spotted Cow. I don't even it know what accent though. that was. That was terrible. Lack always makes fun of me because I, he thinks I, I do horrible impressions. Um, oh, so you get a Spotted Cow now. That's yeah. Yeah. That's, that's oh, Minnesota. you got You got to get, don't you know? No, that's don't Minnesota. You know? Yeah. Uh, you got to get spotted. I thought it was a restaurant. And so somebody's Sorry. like, uh, what are you going to do for dinner? And I was like, well, I don't know. Maybe we'll check out the spotted cow. And they spotted were just cow. Like, looking at me like, <laughs> what? Having beer for dinner. Yeah. yeah but he's like, There's I'm leaving. Wrong with that. All hey, right. Hey, Wisconsin is a way of life. <laughs> Chris, uh, I mentioned this in the pre-interview. One of my favorite quotes in all of sports history. My friend Chris Brown, who may be on here tonight, smart football, had a, had a, uh, a line about this play when the after the game it was you can draw it up you can scheme it up you can even execute it properly but a guy named tank bats down the ball and you go home a loser i'm sorry nate that's oh, really no. harsh no. but uh so it is wide dogs meaning the safety and the backer are coming from the field it is cover zero now the problem with this call is if it's a 10 personnel look the safety has to come over to take number three that is why the dog switchback is a thing because it forces the backers yeah. to adjust so you don't give it away. So this gets us into zero coverage rather than zero free, basically, is what. Exactly. Got it. Got it. Also, we've talked about Agent 90 all game, not going inside far enough on these <laughs> fires. Okay. You're going to see the right tackle block the end. Now, I haven't watched this play, and I did not watch this play before today. I've not watched this play in probably 10 years, but this thing is seared into my brain. Oh, yeah. That he blocks this guy and the smoke. Though, isn't it? Just, isn't the play just why stick? Isn't it stick? Yeah. yeah. It's, a, okay. it's a high low. Yeah. That's Mallard. It. Didn't you listen, Vass? I know Mallard. it's called Mallard, but I. Gun trail right That's north it. Mallard, if you want the whole, whole, whole play call. Yeah, he gets both guys. Oh, God. 
throat right now. Pin it Sorry, on him. I'm trying not to draw this painfully slow. My mouse got stuck. <laughs> he is open. Painless. It is a ge- it is tie game. It's going to overtime. Oh, the misery. Oh, Wristbands no, and all. That son bitch never, never that better guy. have had any sort of sweat get onto him with all those wristbands. I'll never forget him because of that. I mentioned this earlier too before we got on here that somebody was asking me about this game. They didn't remember who won. They didn't remember anything about it, but they were like, oh, the guy with all the wristbands? <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. There he is. Look, look at this. Getting those arms up. I always thought they, this was Gabe Creamy that made this block, but it's not. It's it's Zeitler. I, I remember. Uh, yeah, it's Ricky Wagner on the right tackle. Watch. He gets... He played. He gets the he gets the fire and he gets the smoke coming off the edge. He is wide, and I always thought he was throwing to Kendrick too. Yeah, so we we go twelve here because we want we want Pedersen and Kendricks both on the field because they're better receivers. Oh, I had this as eleven personnel. I think we went twelve. I think Kendricks is in the slot. Is this him I right think. here? I think well, so, that's yeah. also probably why, Chris, the call was wide dogs, not one of the switchback calls. Right. With 12 personnel, you're not likely to have an open set like this. That, I was going to ask that because what... that's not something you would call. Because every time they were in a ele- – well, no, 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 that's not true. Every time it was gun 11, it was a 10 look. Yes. But what's funny is is when you guys so look 11, under we center were... 11, you got in 12 looks because you kept motion yeah. the receiver across. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> So the other thing, and this will be forever ingrained in my memory. um, So we got a backup boundary safety in the games. Number nine has played uh, most of the fourth quarter at boundary safety to carry and went down. I can't remember what happened to him. But um, Chad Glasgow was up in the box, our safeties coach. and, And I was down on the field, so I didn't necessarily see this. And he just starts yelling. He's got to get over. He's got to get over. We're not covering number three. Like, he is just yelling and yelling. So, that boundary safety should be like, we should be covering him. The defensive scheme, believe it or not, was not to leave a guy wide ass open. <laughs> that was not part of the – But you see to hear that. Nine, who's standing up there not doing anything, uh, is supposed to be uh, covering him. And, and that's uh, just, like I said, it's just one of the – fortunately for us, that we still make uh, a play on it, but – even uh, though I was I elated at the time, this makes me feel like painful for for Nate. I actually, feel, uh, you know, I gotta give it up for, to Nate for coming on here tonight. To be on the other side, the losing side of this, to come on here and be gracious enough to break this down when I've said things like losers and like t- horrible things, <laughs> which I didn't mean. That wasn't my quote, by the way. Now let me ask you this: I want to ask you this. I don't want to throw your teammate on the bus, former teammate on the bus. But do you put anything on him for? Going out here and ter- look with nobody on him. Don't you think uh, you should just sp- so, turn around? Well, he no, because he's expecting someone to relate inside out. So he's you know, expecting someone away. to cover him. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I don't think he's. I don't think he's expecting it to be wide ass open. Mm. I think he's. You tricked he's him. He, run away. he got what's the, he got so open. He got nervous. Yeah, oh. I, I actually the one that I'm I'm actually frustrated at Zeitler not not getting his hands down. Give him a little nut shot or something. Like, just make a little contact on him. But it's one of those where it's just the guys just making a play. The problem is it's 2010, 2011 film, so it's not in HD. So it gets it gets a little blurry. But Blurry. Oh, my God. And I, I think Chris, like, stopped calling this play because he had such PTSD from it. <laughs> like, but it was, was a just... good play. It was open. Wide open. Oh. I had never watched this play on film until this morning when you I, sent it over. I'm really sorry. I feel really awful now. It's therapy. It's hey, tragedy plus time equals do comedy. You, do you good. feel like you've exercised some demons? I do. It was good. I there's a couple plays in there like I remember way different than what happened. Really? Like, I remember that first play, the first drive, the backside dig the tune. I remember that hitting him square in the hands, and he was wide open, about to walk into the end zone. You rewatch it, and the corner's right on him. Like it was like a tough play, and it's like bang, bang, how play. you remember it. Yeah, how you remember these things is funny. It's like I remember being wide open. It was a walk-in touchdown. And I was so mad. I watched back I'm like, okay, <laughs> not that. I actually bad. had some of those play. moments with Leck when he would come visit, because uh, we used to hire Leck to come out to Sarah and and clinic us. Well, clinic me <laughs> in the off season, and I remember we'd we'd go to watch a game, and I'd be like, oh, we got our ass kicked. It was it was it was a bloodbath. It was a bloodbath, and then. We would turn it on and he'd be like, 
what? You're yeah. missing tackles, but you're not getting your ass kicked. Or I'd be like, oh, that was a really good call for us. And then I'd, I'd pull up the call, and we like the first four plays is just, just him just kicking our ass. I'm like, yeah. ooh, maybe I misremember this. But it's yeah. It's never as good as you remember. It's never as bad as you nice. remember. That's what I've always learned with film. It's so funny. Some of the days you think it's going to be amazing, you watch it, you're like, oh my God, we sucked. We got lucky. And then or you're, you're on like, the oh field God. and you're watching the left side, and he makes a great play, and you're like, yeah, and then you get in the film, and the right side, everyone is open. Raw, yeah, yeah. Everyone, <laughs> everyone, just everybody's open, and you're like, yeah. anyway. Well, that guys, works. any final thoughts before we uh, sign off? No, I uh, don't need to see a shrink this week, so I'm good. <laughs> you know, I got my therapy in. <laughs> Sorry, no, I but honestly, this, this is a this is a ton of fun. It's so much fun for me because, like I said, I come from a quarterback perspective, so I, I bucket a lot of things. I know minor rules, like I know kind of like what you guys are talking about, but it's really fun to hear you guys break it down and like reverse engineer the plays, which mm. is really fun for me. I can do that offensively, but like watching it in defense was cool. Just kind of wow. seeing the tit for tat that happened throughout the game, so that was cool. One of the few times i probably got to do this more often is watch film from and, and get the offensive perspective on it too and and what we're trying to do it kind of reiterates some it, you know ultimately the player's ability to execute a scheme is probably more important than <laughs> <Right>. the scheme <laughs> itself often too often because you can see that happen on both sides of the ball where yep. we're slanting into each other at times or we're trying to over communicate a call at times and yeah. And sometimes that works for you because it gets you in the right, the perfect situation. And then sometimes you're playing, playing behind the eight ball because you're trying to overthink things. Or you're trying to communicate too much. Well, yeah. that, I remember this game was a big learning experience for us because we had so much game planning stuff. And I kept mentioning all the personnel tells we had and all that. And I remember it was a big lesson on having answers no matter the coverage. Because I mm -hmm. think you guys, you sprinkled in some different, and you were talking about it throughout this. And it's just funny to hear that because we were expecting match, 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 you know, on every passing mm -hmm. down. And all of a sudden it was not mm -hmm. that, like in a true sense, like yeah. an overarching yeah. sense. So it's kind of funny. Some of those plays we had designed really didn't have great answers for some of like a hot answer or something that yeah. falls out quick and all that. It was kind of, I remember this game being a good lesson, uh, learning all that, having answers for all the coverage as possible. Yeah. Yeah, it, it it's fascinating to me to what go back and to actually have the calls. Like those were not I was not guessing. Those were those were the calls. And what's funny is I had tagged it before with things that I thought and then to actually get the calls and be like and then there's some shit like the Indian fullback thing. Like there's there's literally and we talk about this every week. Unless you're in those meeting rooms, unless you're knowing the rules cuz you may only see something show up one time. Like mm -hmm. Lech mentioned with that B slant call, you literally would not be able to figure it out if you don't have the rules in front of you. And I mm -hmm. have studied this shit inside and out, forward and backward. I've had this game for so many years. And even today I'm watching, I'm going, oh shit, that's what that was. Like, uh, it's just, I don't know. I had a lot of fun. I've been looking forward to this. Um, like I said before, we, we, we did the, as a tribute to Gary, we did the, uh, Al, no. Was the Alamo Bowl? No, it was the Chick-fil-A Bowl when they played Ole Miss. I think TCU's best defense that 2014 year. Yeah. When they got robbed of going to the, the natty and uh, the, oh, shit, yeah. the shit kicking they gave Ole Miss. And somebody's like, you got to do the Rose Bowl. And then everybody was like, yeah. And so I've been wanting to do this for almost four months now. So... Thank you, it. Nate, for coming on and being gracious and, and suffering through some of that stuff with me. And like, I know you're well, so busy. You got I don't know that he suffered through all of it. There were times where they were just running it right up. <laughs> True. That's what's great. I know that's what's so funny. I, I break down NFL stuff. There's 30 plus pass plays. I can I can talk about all this. This was we ran like five concepts and like threw the ball a how dozen times. times so. Like how many total throws did you have in this game? It wasn't very many. I would say 16 if I had to guess. I can tell you uh, if you give me, we're not, we're not going back to the game film. If you but I don't. But there's so much, only so much you can talk about with zone. It's like I don't know how Shanahan teams do it. Like just go. Like, all right. Well, there's there's a nice scoop there. Yep. Nice slip. Oh yeah. He just fell. He didn't get. He didn't reach the second level. Yeah. That that's what happened there. 
But uh, no, it's uh, it, that Wisconsin game too, or was being in the Wisconsin offense, it, it spoils you in those short yard situations when they're mm. they're freaking automatic, and then right. you get into the league, and it's like, oh, those are coin flips <laughs> that you convert yeah. on those. I have I have twenty passes, but I don't have all ah. the plays tag. But 60, 69 plays with two cuts, so twenty out of sixty seven plays. Yeah, so under a third. Hold on, <laughs> let me let me do this. I'm gonna do first and second down passes. Okay, we got the third quarter. It's you know now from this lens, watching kind of flows of play calling and everything. I could see Chris got to a lot of like, well, we've set up the run. Let's just get let's start play action this stuff. Like we set all this stuff up, and then that last drive, he went back to okay, let's run weak side zone. Yeah, I noticed that when I watched it earlier today, because I just to kind of prepare myself. Like they were, there was a stretch about two series in a row in the third fourth quarter. Yep. where you guys went heavy throwing the ball on first down, second yep. down, and it wasn't real effective. And then you came back on that last drive and just hammered it down the field. <laughs> like, I don't right know if you threw the ball on that last drive. It was kind of like the uh, first but, drive of the game where you just ran it right down the field. Yep. It's it's hard. And that's why I, Chris is one of the best, probably the best play caller I've been around because he usually has no fear of repeating calls, which is always the, the offensive play caller's – like they galaxy brain it and think like, oh man, they're on to us, they're on to us. It's like, well, they got to stop you up before you get to your change up and everything. Yeah, and I don't understand know that keep, mindset. If it's working, keep doing it. Keep doing yeah. it. But so, oh, especially in the league, it's it's amazing. That that was one of my, I, I really like Kellen Moore, but some of his stuff. I know we're getting the NFL talk right now, but getting yeah. with Kellen Moore is sometimes say, hey, just repeat the call, man. Like you don't have to get to designer play number seventeen. Xerox. Hey, yeah, play run two's been working. Let's just flip it and run it again. Uh, so the stats were on first and second down, 10 passes, 35 runs. Yeah. <laughs> I bet yeah, you that bet game finished in two and a half was hours. Still pretty good though. I bet the yards per carry was still pretty good. My, my gain is not, uh, the, the gain. I, I don't think it's very accurate, but yeah, it was, yeah. well, there was a 44, there were two 40 plus yards run. There were some big chunks, but yeah, those will change the numbers in a hurry when you get those chunk plays. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, to answer Maddie, last thing Ma- Maddie asked: Are they lever spill lever or spill and overlap? It's pretty much all spill and overlap. Spill and overlap is a TCU yeah, spill was not. Overlap. There's there was no lever spill lever until later on until they got in the triangle stuff, which <laughs> because when they were shoving and playing too deep, it, that was for the pass. Yeah, they were not getting in that to run the football, so it was like just tackle the ball. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> uh, and and a lot of it was they yeah. Bu- well, to your point, like we weren't oh those calls, we didn't overly stress run fits. And yeah, th- like there's certain calls on defense that that you're not calling to stop inside zone, and yeah. if you get inside zone, your players got to play out of the call and play it. Keep the ball in your inside shoulder. It was one thing we would do is we would play St. Francis in uh, Mountain View, and they were a 21 personnel team on third down. I mean, we talked run fits. It was all run fits all week, but it was third down, and we shoved and turned into a 4-3 to play two high. I would, they're like, what gap do I have? I'm like, just fit the ball. Just go tackle the ball, carry <laughs> because it's third and nine. Like, yeah. So I'm nine ball. yards. Yeah. Anyway. All right, guys. Nate, how can we find you on social media? Uh, find me at Nate underscore Tice on Twitter uh, and also on Twitch, Nate underscore Tice, twitch.tv or whatever. And then usually find me on the Athletic Football Show. I have no shows this week, but you'll hear me a couple times next week. Are all the NFL writers are pretty much on vacation, right? I think so. And I, I'm writing vacation. college report for, for Bleacher Report. So, yeah, I'm not on vacation. <laughs> I got the combine next week. Mina's on vacation. Robert's on vacation. Everybody. Yeah. It's awfully yeah, quiet on Twitter. Know. There's a lot of college football is, talk going on. And Aaron Rodgers. I, the amount mm. of people that guessed that he was on some weirdo ayahuasca t- uh, trip was spot on. Anyway, Brandon, <laughs> how can we find you on uh, social my media? My Twitter is at coach underscore L-E-C-H, Leck, at coach underscore Leck. Nice. Guys, yeah, it, through Oklahoma City and want to talk some footballs, come on by. And he's one of the best in the game to talk ball with. One of my best friends in the whole world. Hired me uh, 
10 oh now shit it's been oh, 10 and a half and years a ago yeah. um uh so anyway uh this was a blast thank you so much for joining us and uh we will see you soon maybe to return i don't know just stay in tune subscribe do all that shit subscribe turn the notification whatever you, i'm supposed to say do it i'm about to pass out i'm so fucking tired so i'm gonna <laughs> say good night you guys have a great night thank you so much again i really appreciate you guys Awesome. Yep. Have a good so one, much fun. Man. See you guys. See you boys.